Welcome to the Grandmaster Level Show. Um, episode Grandmaster Level Nutrients Launching. Today on the show, we've got Flora Farm, Spartan Grown, and Charlene Paul. Um, Marcus Bubbleman might be able to make it here later. He was running a little bit late. Um, how is everybody doing on this awesome Saturday? Pretty dang good. How about you? Doing good, man. Well, I'm, I'm doing incredible. It's been two days doing edibles in a row. This morning I woke up with a yogurt lid and granola in my bed. So, uh, you know, the edibles were good. <laughs> Holy crap. On the first night, I woke up, I was so bloated. Like I ate everything that you could eat in the house. I don't even know how it's possible. I must have ate three or four oranges and two pears. And oh my God, I was so full in the morning. It was insane. So yeah, um, but I'm sleeping nice, man. I went like, I just couldn't take it anymore. I literally, it's killing me like two to three hours of sleep. It was literally killing me. You can only do that for so long. And it's like, uh, you start to really run your body down and oh, it's so nice going back to sleeping. Uh, obviously my tolerance is I, I'm not taking these crazy, you know, six, 700 milligram stuff. I'm starting with like 50 to a hundred and it's like a really large dose for me at this point, you know, that's uh, good. That's good. Yeah. Save, save you some edibles, man. Yeah, exactly. Well, I have to make some, I had to make some that are weak or like open gel caps and just have a little bit in them. Um, how is, uh, how was your week, Kestin? Uh, why don't you tell us you got something going on in Barcelona as a judge here? Yeah, so I after I made the uh, we found out we we're going to be able to make the trip over. I now sat and had uh, the Auto Flower World Cup reached out and uh, wanted to uh, invite me to be a judge at the Auto Flower World Cup going on during that week at Spanova. So it looked like our schedules weren't conflicting, and uh, going to get to see what the Europe is. Mediterranean has to offer in the autoflower world. Super stoked on that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm kind of curious about how the food is there. Like I heard there's a lot, a lot of good food. Um, so. That's the first thing that everyone says when I they have mentioned Barcelona is the food is just phenomenal. Real ingredients, not all the same shit. Like, uh, but, or is that, or is that Italy? No. Um, I can't even remember now, but I, I definitely there's really good food. I've heard from multiple people. Um, so yeah, that's got to be pretty exciting for you guys to be going to the legends of hashish and spanibus and the oh, ICPC I'm event. Excited for <laughs> Pileta or how are you gonna pronounce it that hash? I can't wait to try that, man. Right, I, yes. I gotta try that. <laughs> Dude, the, the bricks are so so gorgeous. It just slicing looks like almost like a goat cheese or something or slicing those. Right yeah, like a loaf of bread, like the softest yeah, yeah. loaf of bread you ever cut or something. Oh. It's just, ugh. Yeah, my mouth yeah. was looking at it. Well, like I said, it's like uh, from that last Legends of Hashish one, I got to try some samples that Marcus had. And man, one of them like reminded me of the first dab I ever did. Like, um, I guess it wasn't it was called butter. He was like way ahead of his time. It was this guy named Ron Surrey, and he he would make it. And me and my, I remember it was the, well, whenever the Blair Witch Project was, I think that was 96, because like me and my friend both took a, a dab of it. And it just, like my friend was pu like puking afterwards. He thought there, he was like, there's heroin in it. He goes, <laughs> it was insane. Uh -oh. um, yeah, well, I forgot where I was going with that, guys. <laughs> What else is um what else is happening this week? Um, I just did an update with the room. I just or made a video like and I made a post. It's like going mini viral. It's got over forty thousand views from a few hours ago. I found a thrips in my room and I'm excited about it. I wasn't using the tarantula predators yet, just a pure laziness. Like I, well, I I guess you could call it lazy, or I'm just so busy that I just haven't had time to set it up. And yeah, then seeing them today, it's like oh, this is awesome. I get to document eradicating them in our room again and um so it's because i already have some wicked documentation of it that, but i get to show it again um and i can just assure you guys thrips are a problem of the past with the tarantula predator you do not have to worry about them you can straight up have immunity to them even with the like you don't even have to run the tarantula predators full like that hard and it's enough to completely slow them down to 98 to 99 percent where they're all confused and just not doing anything and we can eradicate them too. 
um, like thrips, they have about a 28 to 30 day life cycle. So even if you stop the reproduction of them and confuse them a bit, it still take, it can take up to a month for them to actually die off. Um, have the to good ask. news is, is that, that, yeah, like you said, that light pretty much, like I have it in, in my, that very thankfully have it in my flower room. And it's like, I don't even worry about shit anymore. I'm like, yep, I'm just gonna, I mean, I keep my eye out obviously, but if I see anything, I'll, I just use the lights and I don't have to worry anymore. <laughs> Absolutely. That's so a much better than having to spray rooms and making sure you're getting every square inch. Ugh. Yeah, I know. It's, it's just, it's totally wild. You know, and also another thing I'm like so excited about having under canopy lighting um, and just like looking at how dark it is underneath there and on how much of a game changer. And just so everybody knows our under canopy lights, well, I, we'll have like a clip so that our predator lights can clip onto them. If you want, you don't have to use them that, but they will have the ability to be compatible together, but they both float. And that's why our under canopy and um, predator light is so cool. Cause it's attached to this utility patent that allows our stuff to float. Well, everybody else is in the stone age using pots and um, like putting it on metal brackets now, I, I brought this up last week, I think, before. Uh, we had an intercanopy light over a year and a half ago, and I did, um, and I was going to launch it, and we didn't launch it because of this person that did a whole bunch of R&D with Philips. And I saw that, you know, they only had a 2 to 4% gain with the intercanopy, and the amount of cleaning and extra work, they said that was just not even worth it. But once I, I started seeing people use undercanopy lights, and I saw real results, and so ours, ours is more than just under canopy too, but, uh, we're, you know, we're in three days guys going back to production full time for probably the next three weeks in a row without taking a day off. Um, after last year, we learned to prepare for the Chinese new year, because like most people, like if you just try to order something in a few days, you're screwed, but we already have everything we need when we went right into production a couple of days that longer than everybody else. And we're about to just kick it off again. And we're going to be aggressively, uh, working on the under canopy lights. We're just waiting on certification for the UVB, UVA, which I'm hoping we can get done in the next month. And um, besides that and the Predator, like I said, we're uh, waiting for just certification. A lot of people have asked, well, why didn't you launch it? Well, we decided to just make it certified first. And it's it's not like it's just one certification. It's like we're dealing with different rules for every single country. Um, but in USA, it's going to be first. Believe it or not, it's easier in USA than it is Canada. Um, but we're we're working with Health Canada and working on that to be able to get it fully approved. Um, it just makes everybody's life easier, not only ours, but the customer as well. If you want to qualify for rebates, if you want to, you know, if you have all these certifications, it, it's it's far easier with building codes, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, well, it just well, and also just the legality of it. So, um, yeah, it, it just it's going to really make a difference. And yeah, the under canopy, um, like I said, uh, going inner, I've seen people that have gone with that. And like I said, we, I will show us, I'll show you the design that we had. Like we had one that was very similar um, to what I think it was Phillips that they were the first person to do it. Um, maybe Phillips or Fluence, but either way, ours was pretty similar to one of theirs and we just never did anything with it. Um, well, okay. Well, I know what I wanted to talk about. So the nutrients, they're finally done and we're finally launching. Um, so let's just quickly talk about it for a second here. So here, <clears throat> does it show up for everybody or not? Or just one second. Is it showing up for you guys? Yeah, yeah. I've seen it. Okay. Okay. So right here is our lineup. So um, it's a little bit different. Like on the very last one, when we tested it, it's the same thing, except for like for our, our bloom, we omitted the nitrogen right out of it. So we have our one base. So basically, if you're, you're using our bait, like say if we're in grow, you just be using our base and grow. If you're in bloom, you'll be using our base with bloom. And for week, you know, two to four, you have the option of using a booster. And this one, I couldn't eliminate the nitrogen from because it just, it, it screwed up the formula and I'd have to add too much manganese, but um, it's still full. You still will have full control of how much you want to use it. And you don't have to use it if you don't want to use nitrogen. It's just, I think it's really... Um, gives you a serious advantage 
not or being able to control the nitrogen, especially as you get into week five or four. So you don't get that toxicity that so many lines, like so many people and, and liquid lines are probably the worst for this too. But like so many people be like, oh, you got to bump it up. You bump it up and I bump it up and it's like toxicity. You have the curl on your leaf. Um, so yeah, we're, we're really excited. Like we made four different full lineups, you know, through four different co companies. Well, even a fifth company, but I wouldn't consider that much like it, we didn't test it the same way that we tested each one of these where we're having pallets made and um, it works incredible. And um, here's the thing is there's a lot of really good brands that work out there and it, it, there's no end, there's no patenting, there's no secrets. We've analyzed anybody that's relevant. So there is no, Oh, you know, everything is pretty damn similar and we're going to be able to point out if somebody's trying to say something is better, what the difference is and break it right down with the lab analysis if we need to for anybody at any time. I think that's the best way to do it. It's like, it's a, it's kind of like lighting. Anybody can make any spectrum. Anybody can make any um, nutrients, but there is um, definitely a side of quality on the inputs. And we definitely noticed a difference on how things dissolve and just... You know, so obviously we want to use the best of the best in every aspect. So obviously we went with the company that we felt the, the best with and also provided the best quality product and everything dissolved the best. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's pretty exciting, guys. Is there any questions in chat about it? Um, someone's asking, is there going to be a four by four light? <laughs> we have... Any of our lights work for a four by four. Plus we have a four by four tent light that's uh, designed specifically for tents. Um, is it powder nutrients? Yes, it, it's all salt based. If you were on the list with Mandy for samples, like that was like from two and a half years ago or whatever, or three years ago, we still have that list. And as soon as it lands, you will be getting samples of it. Um, like, so once it lands, we're obviously going to, we're always going to at least go through a month and do a whole bunch of tests and make sure everything is still perfect on it. And just to make sure before we release it to everybody, to the fully full public. But um, yeah, I'm, I just, I know that having, well, I'm, I'm just excited to be able to have that control. Cause even when I'm growing with right now, I don't have that control. Like if I bump it up, I have to worry about toxicity. I don't even know which one of my parts has the bunch of N in it. And uh, anyways, I'm excited about it. Like we spent a lot of time and a lot of money. We lost a lot of nutrients in the fires in Kelowna. Um, pallets were at one of my friend's places and it all burnt. Um, but, you know, I figure we should be getting in about eight to nine weeks. We just literally finalized everything. They, I was trying to like push to have everything without nitrogen, except for, you know, our one base. And that wasn't possible on that one. Well, like it. I didn't want to bat, screw up the balance of something else. Like I, I had to fill it with something else. I don't know how to really explain it properly, but I was a little bit annoyed by that. But uh, yeah, it's, um, it's the real deal, guys. And it's happening soon. There's a question in chat. They said they don't see a CalMag. Where's the, where's the CalMag? It's not needed. It's it's in our base. And like there's the perfect levels of CalMag or calcium and magnesium are in our base from our, our bloom and our grow. And um it's the perfect level. So you'll never need to add any Calameg. You don't even need to use our boosters. Like just using the base is going to be like any rock solid line that you're doing really well with. Now there's a lot of other lines out there, like, cause we analyzed a lot and learned a lot by analyzing it. And there's lots that have to be mixed immediately because if they get agitated, they kind of lose their mixture. And ours isn't like that. Like, obviously you don't want to agitate it like crazy but ours isn't going to lose the balance where you have to mix the whole bag like that like certain different lines that have that um so that's um that's kind of one thing that's and just the, the simple fact of being able to control n just like the very first number in anything in these mixtures is nitrogen so if you don't have a the first number is zero when you're looking at other lines that show that you'll see that a lot of them don't have that uh well most of them have that base like even in our our original bloom base that's you know it's 0 14 18 it originally was set i think it was like 7 14 18 i really could had more and i just i just love the idea of being able to weigh it way back if you want or completely omit it and yeah. it phosphorus at the right time no i'm gonna struggle with this 
But over at Bubble Man's chat, Faridus7 is asking, I, I, I've always had a hard time pronouncing this element, but are there any m- molybdenum? Molybdenum. In, yeah, molybdenum. Is there any of that? You in? know why I know that word so well, molybdenum? <laughs> because it's I been shown to into a mali- I invested into a molybdenum stock. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah I had a tip. <laughs> nice. And well, um, in cannabis, it helps to produce more of the the purples and anthocyanins. It so. absolutely has molybdenum. And um, yeah, I, it's funny. I invested into a stock. I had a tip. And on that day that they said it was going to blow, it went up like 150%. I couldn't fucking believe it. And I was like, whoa, okay, this shit is legit. Damn. And then like, I, I was like, oh, I'd had a pretty bad experience at that point. And so I was really like gun shy investing in anything because I had taken like a six digit loss investing in something else. So I was like very skeptical. And I was like, oh, okay, wow, this is awesome. And then like, I see my friend go all in. Like I'm talking, liquidate everything he did, take out every last piece of money on his credit card. I saw people mortgage their homes, everything. I watched oh the stock, God. like the stock got up to like a dollar twenty, and uh, I, I remember I got out while it was still. I I managed to get out. Out. I only invested ten grand. I got out with eleven thousand two hundred, but I I watched it go down to like a penny. Oh I my God! Go down to like a penny or two, and then have this. I was so crazy not to buy it. What is it? A penny or two? Yeah. So down to a penny or two. Like I could have got my friend. I could have had the same position of my friend for less than a thousand dollar. Who's got like all this money. And then I watched it go back up to 60 cents. And then I remember saying to my friend, are you going to get out? And he's like, he couldn't like, he had kept on buying it as it's going up and had it like an average dollar share. It was insane. Like they were buying it while it was up. Anyways, long story short, everybody lost everything. It, it just, Oh man. Yeah. It, it was crazy, man. It made me um, like, that was kind of what I made me really like just being a farmer and like, you know, get what you put in, you know what I mean? Don't rely on the gamble. Cause like for years I, I played poker online. I think some people know this. Like I, I spent about a year in the casino of my life of uh, playing straight poker. And then I went to online and I evolved into playing 16 to 12 tables at a time. And I did that for three years playing 250,000 hands a year. One day I, I had become very, very successful with it. And um, one day I woke up and logged into Poker Stars and it said, seized by the FBI. And I got all my money in full tilt poker and, and Poker Stars seized. And that's what pushed me back into growing. I remember. And I, and that, and my very first crop, I then set the world record for like, cause I came out of retirement to growing and I had been a while. And like, I was an old school grower and I was normally not the actual person that was doing it. I was more the person in charge. So, but this one, I was back to it. And I never PH'd in my life and back then. So like, I remember having, uh, I'm growing these cush strains that I'm not used to growing. And on my, my very first crop, I got two and a half pounds on one 10 light trailer and a pound and a half off eight lights. And like- A pound and a half off eight lights? Yeah. Ouch. I locked them out like basically or two or three weeks into it like the where the buds just didn't really grow and i just still went the whole thing and like it was just it was pathetic um it was just like uh what's so funny is this one guy that was my partner on it even accused me of uh pinching and i'm like oh i can see why you would think that damn well i i know i was so mad like i was so mad i even gave him an extra half pound i felt so fucking bad that was half the harvest on it (laughs) Eight <laughs> after that crop i went to every last person i know who grew the most og growers that grow the kill and i picked their brain and i picked their brain and like the next one you know i got a ph meter and i i just i nailed it out of the park and hit like the nicest quality that i had like back then we could get in the three thousands and i hit like i hit a home run on it and that was my point where i start growing the kill and then that's when i that's when it all started where I got back into it full time. I don't even know how we got into the story, guys. <laughs> Ranting on. We were talking about poker somehow, and that led to yeah, that. But I don't that remember how we got into poker. poker. <laughs> yeah, I don't even remember. But yeah, anyways. Uh, GML, know. is there an option for people to still get on the sample list? Um, I, I don't want to say anything before I talk to Mandy because there's probably like a hundred and something people on the list already, or I don't even know. So there's probably like, um, so I, I can't promise that yet. I just, I'd have to talk to M- Mandy before. 
So we'll talk to Mandy and then touch on it maybe next week, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of inquiries on it. Um, yeah, what else do we have? Also, um, how does it compare to Athena or Jax? Um, I, I think, well, I think I personally, like, I know a lot of people have wicked success with both of them. And I think um, us having the control of nitrogen is kind of like a notch up. Um, so I personally think it's going to be a little bit, I, I think it could perform better or being having, um, but I, I can't, you know, I think people do very well with Athena. I know with one thing about Athena, you have to mix it right away when it comes into the bag. That's, that's kind of like a same example. But uh, like I said, these are, if you guys trust me, what I've done with lighting and everything that I've done, like I have done my homework. This isn't something we did overnight. This is something that happened over like five years and a lot of money. Like not just like a little bit of money either, guys, like a lot of money. And, um, but it, we did it right. So, um, yeah, I think you guys are going to absolutely love it. I would, I would love anybody to put it to the test to put it up against any other line. Just because I think we have a little bit of an edge with that extra control. I'm a fan, big fan of just the dry aspect of it, dry nutrients and not having to pay for water to be shipped all over the place. So and that's just going to be added savings for everybody. So that's cool. I like that a lot. And especially if you're like, a mon if you guys are like monster farms and you're actually getting it by the pallet, hit us up. We're going to give you the best deal ever. So we're, there's no one will be able to compete with it. We're not trying to get rich off people here. We're here to hook people up and, um, you know, have a really good product the same way that we've done it with our lights. And um, like where we don't have the same type of margins every as everybody, we don't have the same type of cost and overhead. We're not running our business extremely inefficiently. We don't spend money on advertising. We don't need to. <laughs> so it's a, um, yeah. It'll be here, you think it'll be here before spring, yeah? Like April, May? I, I, I was told on Friday that I should have it within eight to nine weeks, but like we were, I, I'm gonna have to do it like at least a month of testing to just make sure everything is perfect um, before we actually release it. But it, it, trust me, it's it's coming for real this time. Like everything is finalized. We've also made a micro green um, formula too. Um, that's, you know, we like, that's something this year, like we've, we've really worked some hard on a, and innovated on some stuff to do with microgreens. We came up with some, just some ridiculous couple designs for, for microgreens and growing veggies and stuff. And um, I would imagine in about two or three months after we were, you know, we bang out the tarantula predator, the UVA B and the under canopy lighting. We then, you guys are going to see our lettuce towers and all different types of like microgreens. Um, we're collaborating with a, a, a YouTube channel that's got over a million followers or subscribers in Saskatchewan. And they're setting up, we're doing just some, he's got like a massive studio. We're setting up like I think 250 square feet, or it might even be 500 square feet actually in total of the room of all different types of growing, all different types of vegetables from like tomatoes to beans, um, to potatoes, to everything. Like he wants to grow veggies with meat. He's into like survival stuff. And um, it, we're going to be testing all different light levels. So we're going to be doing it with the minimum amount of light against with the maximum amount of light, more than enough than we need. And just getting some really valuable R&D just could, like to see if we need to change anything or what is going to be the perfect wattage for our indoor um, flowering for tomatoes and stuff. And the most efficient, like we don't want people to have to spend money to buy a 700 watt light and dam it down to 300 watts, but we want that coverage. So we're really going to, we're doing like a whole bunch of R&D. It's super exciting. You guys are going to freaking love this guy. He's a freaking, he's awesome. You, you probably know, you might, a lot of you probably know who he is or will know or know who he is. I'm a sure, well, he does probably a million views a day overall. So I would say uh, you guys, he's pretty popular. Um, how long um, can you store it dry? A really long time, Froggy. As long as you don't let, like, ideally you don't want to let moisture as long as it's sealed. And do you have a price point? There's a lot of people inquiring about a price point. I haven't finalized everything, but we're going to be getting aggressive. So we're going to be getting aggressive here. Um, and it's going to be the best, in my opinion, the best value out of there. We're going to, we're coming in. 
to have the best value out there um, to make it affordable for everybody, and especially as you scale up in bigger farms too. That's where we really want to help people out. I've seen a lot of people paying offensive pricing when they're buying a thousand kilograms worth of stuff. So we've got some pretty big farms that are pretty pumped. Is it pH balanced? No, it's not like a pH perfect kind of line. Um, you have to add pH. So it's always going to drop your pH using it. Um, but yeah, it's uh, what else we got, guys? Uh... PPM or our PPM recommendations. We'll have all that. Um, we'll have that all like a schedule and everything long before we launch. But like for the boosters, we're only adding like at the very most 50 to 100 ppm like on top of our base when you're using them so yeah. and can the newts be pre-ordered there's no need to <laughs> we got, they're going to be available power. in both the u.s and canada pardon i think i'm available everywhere just u.s yeah, canada no absolutely no absolutely usa and canada as soon as we go well we'll have them over in michigan they'll be they'll be shipping from michigan is it a so. two-part? <laughs> yeah, well, no, that it's, it's a, well, we have a base and then there's like, oh, in total, it's five parts, but you don't really need, like, you can totally just use the three-part, like if you, or even two-part if you're just blooming. So it's like a base and then, well, I'll just, I'll quickly show it again in case anybody didn't see. So here we got base. So if you were blooming, you would do base and bloom and you, you have the option to add the boosters. If you were doing grow, it would just be base and grow. So it's completely. Um, so veg, you're doing base and grow. For flower, you're doing base and bloom. Base and bloom. And that you can add the boosters from week two to four and week five to six. I'd say that's for more advanced people. It's not necessary. Mm -hmm. Like, just think that that's for like at the same time as you like how we're, you know, crop steering with lights and people that are pushing stuff to the limits and really want to push your plants. Um, we're giving that. Like I can tell you right now from those same sort of uh, mixtures in all my days of soil, they're very, very similar to some of the boosters I was using that I did very, very well where I used them and, and tried omitting them and I always did better with them. So that is why we have them. Um, will it come in bags or buckets? How many pounds? Um, I'm I'm thinking that I don't know 100%. Like we haven't even made it to that the packaging part. Like we don't even have machinery like on the first one like we don't even have machinery like i'm sure within a couple of months after getting it we're going to be buying machinery so it all can package itself and that kind of stuff but um we still have a bit to figure out when it comes to the packaging and same with all the names like uh, i we have the name grandmaster level nutrients and we fought for two years in court well not in court like le like legally and we, the day before going to our hearing advanced withdrew from it and we like it, we won by default from them withdrawing, but it was insane because we had a winning case anyways. It was insane that they took it that far. Our lawyer said they had never seen a company do that when like we had a, a rock solid case, like we're not losing, <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like they were, they were gonna have to prove that they had sold something with the trademark Grandmaster Grower in the, within the last two years. And that just, you know, and they even submitted evidence to try to like, show it at one point and we were just like no we're calling we're going right to court over this so anyways um but yeah so we don't have the names yet unfortunately i can't i don't have the name tarantula under the section c2 it's actually owned by advanced nutrients um, or else i'd be using that probably <laughs> is there sulfur in it absolutely Sulfur is a pop. That's almost a macronutrient, in my opinion, when it comes to cannabis. It's hard to overdo sulfur, and it helps with terps. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, um, dudeist. Exactly, they. Um, <laughs> but anyways, yeah, no, it's gonna be. I don't know. We're gonna have names, and there's gonna be artwork and names, and we'll have something. We just have. We honestly, we are. We're not like the biggest organization yet, so we're busy all day long from early to late every day basically um what else we got guys 
There's 298 people here already in the first 49 minutes. What's going on? I don't know, man. People are getting excited about your lights, I guess. Um, oh, I got some actually insane news, guys. The first container, remember how I said, like I told everybody with the, uh, what are they called? The Voyagers, we are we told people to expect them shipping on the 14th and they're going to be here way sooner. Like, I think they're going to be in port in like five days or something or five or six days. So we potentially could have them in eight or nine days, but we still are giving to the 14th because you never know what can happen at the port. But lately it's just been like coming in. So like we're first containers coming and, um, and it's a whole container full of Voyagers. So pretty excited about that. That's awesome. Yeah, that's going to be, uh, I know a lot of people are going to be so happy about that because they're expecting it not to ship till the 14th. And it's going to be like, it's going to be coming almost three weeks sooner. <laughs> No. Well, that's good. That's that's good news. Mm -hmm. You got another ship behind that one. Pardon? Do we have another ship behind that one? We have three behind it. <laughs> nice. We, we got four out before the Chinese New Year. Well, like they started leaving, I think, on the 15th, but the very last one left on the I think it was on the second. So, yeah, we are um, like we. We planned for it. Like last year, we got real, like it was really frustrating because it's my first time dealing with a Chinese New Year. And I, we weren't in the same sort of position one year ago that we are now to be able to like bulk up and buy the extra diodes and parts and really prepare. So um, it's exciting. And we're even going to prepare even more for the next year. You know, for next Chinese New Year, we'll be even more stocked and prepared. That's awesome. Have we heard any news or anything from uh, Samsung or anything in the industry about any new uh, diodes coming out? Any news of anything like that? Um, not that I'm just trying to think. Not really I that. Haven't, I'm... I haven't heard anything new. I was just wondering if you'd heard something. But, you know, one thing I kind of want to bring up: so many people, a lot, are talking about the evil mints and the technology of the 437 nanometer diodes and just going off on it. And I, I can com commit that. Com I can Mend. commend my competitor for pumping these damn evil mints so hard. They've done an extremely good job thinking like blasting them about evil mints, about how good they are and everything. And so what the difference is between the evil mints and the 301 H on paper, they're supposed to be three to four percent higher efficacy, but lots of times when we've bought them and bought the highest bid and tested it, it's still only two percent more. Um, so you're paying a shitload more for these diodes, and then secondly, you're getting a four thirty seven nanometer wavelength. Wait, let me try my. Uh, I'm gonna pull out the high tech board here for a second. As opposed to what? As opposed, what are we comparing it to? The, Normally, just the you would have. Uh, OH? The normally, regular one second here oh normally you would have um a 450 okay so let's uh so normally let's just say that this is 450 can you guys see it by the way yeah is this is this a, a spectral graph you're drawing yes this is okay my, our high tech software so this is a, <laughs> a 450 nanometer wavelength and this is what so would that be on the left side of the spectrum just so i can yes. picture it yeah okay, okay yeah so i'll just if i was doing a normal spectrum it would kind of look like this let's okay. just say okay it's a pretty poor job and this let's just say is like 60. <laughs> yeah i get what you're saying i can't see anything to the right like it's uh, it's cut off i can only see like the top corner of what you're drawing it looks oh, like oh shit what's going on here why can't you like, can you move it center like more of the no i can't hmm. that's weird that's weird okay well anyways my point is oh yeah you can see where i'm drawing up okay so where the 450 is so now they got the 437 so we have lights that have this you know double spike. The double yeah so this is 437 so that's the difference so on, on so many of our lights we have this double spike versus the one spike and yep. um we tested it crops where we have it so so if we have a double spike it's let's say it's short now if we're doing just a against a 450 the to have the same amount of blue it's got to be higher to match the same level so let's just say that this one on the left has the exact same level as the double spike so there's the okay. exact same percentage of blue but except for one of them has the 437 and the 450 right. we couldn't even see one thing different like i even compared the difference in weight and we did this on three different crops where we tested this and there's absolutely no difference. 
Like I, I, I couldn't see. So there's no advantage to the double spike as opposed to the single spike, as long as well, the power is the same. Well, I could. We couldn't see anything with three different strains, or more than okay. three different strains that I tested. But other people, we can't see any difference at all. Blue is blue, basically, is what. You as know far as I the mean? plants like, concerned, people advertising saying that it's going to work for microbials and all this shit. I just 100 percent disagree with it. Like we have, no, you'd have to get into UV to work. I think for my well, work for microbials in what way? Like reduce. Well, microbials? the same because like 437 is closer to UVA. I see. Like it's closer UVA. to it, but it's not UVA. <laughs> I mean, it is closer, but it's not UV. Anyways, in my opinion, I think it is more hype. We've done it to keep up with times and obviously for our full spectrum tuning lights, obviously, okay, it's going to be better to have a double spike that you can turn up all the way because we have more yeah. blue if we want. But do I think, I really don't think that it, it makes that much of a difference as like when you have the same amount of blue and any other time when we're testing other spectrums against each other, when you have, like if, you, if, if let's just say a light's got 33% green in it and another light has 34 and a half green percent. You know what I mean? And then versus yeah. that, you're not seeing any difference. It's little, like when you get within a couple percent, you, there, is, there isn't enough yeah. of a difference to be able to know any type of, like to be able to see it. And that's just what all the data that we've seen. Like, yeah. So the advantage of the Evo is really two in our testing, 2% efficiency. Well, it's sometimes as high as four. Like we've seen okay, it. Okay, still. Okay, let's let's just go crazy yeah. here. We'll call it four percent efficiency. Yeah, like to have a. All you're getting is 4 four percent efficiency, but what's the cost difference between? There's a forty percent cost increase. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. Especially when it's only one or two. But like I said, we've no. But the other here's the beautiful thing about the Evo mints that I love. That why I we use them, I guess more so like for the Borg and these other fixtures is because they can go bluer than. Yeah, you can get to that four K. Yeah, traditionally all white diodes usually started at 3K to 6,500, even though they go as low as 2,200. And uh, the Evo mints go from 7,000 all the way up to 12,000. So we didn't make- 12,000, like, damn. Yeah, we didn't make the board, like even in the, like in our booster bars, we're using like 10,000K Evo mint with um, 6,500 301H to be able to have like the double spike. But we didn't make it with 12,000K. Like if we did- we would have been able to make hundreds of more spectrums. We've done it for R and D, but the reason why we didn't, it's just so much blue. It would, it offsets the balance. Like we were trying to use it. Like, we're using, the red. well, we're, no, like we're trying to use it. So you, it's the cool white and warm white e kind of equal to be oh, able to I see equal amount saying. of wattage. So like doing it this way, you're going to be using one driver way more than the other. Like that yeah. is kind of why we, we did it. And it was screwed. Like it would made it difficult just Difficult for all of our spectrums, I guess, too. Um, like I'm just saying. So you, so so the Evo, this this Evo is also a different. It has different, a wider. We'll say a wider spectrum, a bit. Uh, well, no, like as well, no, or, no, or just bluer, I guess, a bluer spectrum. No, what, no, it has the. Well, what it happened? The Evos have a little bit more green, and they have a 437 nanometer wavelength. It's like I got to close this thing. It's making. Is that you guys or me? That's I can hear this. Uh, I don't hear anything. Sorry, it's uh, not anything out of the ordinary. I'm trying to figure out where it's coming from the Discord. I don't even. Okay, I got to close it. So it keeps on. Yeah, Discord. You have to actually go into your system, try and close it. Even you yeah. think you've got it closed, it's not closed. Okay, sorry. So I was just. What were you just saying about what were we just? I was just we were talking about. I was asking you on the on these Evo uh, diodes if they were bluer. Oh yeah. So the whole point of them, they have a little bit more green, and they're 437 nanometer. But you can have like the 301, like that's the 301H um, Evo Mints have 437. Now the 301H Evo Mint B actually have 450. But we don't need to use, we're not going to spend the extra money to have to have 450 nanometer through them. So we do a combination of 301H with it to get the 450 nanometer. Okay, that's not coming from me. Fuck, sorry. <laughs> do one of you guys have well, it? Okay. I was like, it wasn't it me. I was muted, so it definitely wasn't me. And Heston was muted, so it's going to be you or Charlene. Okay, yeah, I just closed it now. Sorry, I was able to close it through my system. Yeah, drive me crazy with that thing going. <laughs> um, sorry, I have to turn my phone off. Sorry. <laughs> Josh R says, "Hey, can you draw some more for us?" <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. I got something cool to show you. Uh oh. That's scary. Um whiteboard. Okay, let's see. Old text. Okay, let's let's go. Oh, here we go. Okay, hold on a second. Okay, I'm trying to draw a four by eight table with bars on the side. You know? Are you guys seeing okay. it? Okay. Yeah, I'm seeing it now. Okay, this is the very bottom of the table. You know, a whole bunch of people in my family are really good at drawing and something happened. I fell short. <laughs> I like got great. Are you sure? That's a I got, that's I got awesome grade three. Drawing. I got grade three drawing. <laughs> okay, guys. So what um so right now I'll give you guys an example because I'm okay to show you guys what we got going for the under canopy. So we have, so you know how most people either have two bars or they got inner canopy. Well, it's a lot or tent the, bars that could be a tent too. Yeah. So this picture, this picture that these are both an under canopy light, and look at this lower sidebar is also an under canopy light, but lower side lighting. Ours does lower side and under canopy lighting, and it's attached to a utility patent, so they float. Again, you guys are going to get to see how that happens. But how do you like that? Where instead of having just the two, the lower side and the under canopy lighting. And uh, does that make sense? It reminds me of, um, how was it? High Times Old, High Times Magazines in the back there. It used to, I can't remember what it was. It, it ended in like the ter like Terminator or something in Nader or whatever. But it was like this tube, this giant tube that had lights all on the inside facing in. And you grew up and you were just completely bathed in light. And uh, it was always, you know, well past my budget. But I always kind of looked at it like that's kind of a cool idea to just completely surround a plant with light and see what it would do. Yeah, well, it's, it's so obvious. Like when I go in my room and I'm looking, the problem I have with intercanopy lighting is that it's getting like having it right on the plant. You actually need it a little bit back and you need it blasting, emitting. You don't want it. Like, how are you supposed to yield if you're right on the light and it's blocking that way? And the other thing that we've done is we've, we're making ours just the efficacy off the charts over three micromoles per joule. So it's going to be, it's going to be badass. Like the efficiency is going to beat everybody. So you're going to be getting the most light per watt. You're going to have this whole under area fully covered and our predator lights can are compatible with them. So not only that, you'll be able to clip them on and be immune from bugs. Not only that, you get to later on in flower use what we discovered, how you can systemically put UV into the plant where it will affect the whole plant. And this is one of, we brought this up. This is one of the breakthroughs that we have made that there isn't any literature on. And so we're writing the rules on it and we're experimenting with it still. So, um, but definitely in the next couple of months, we're going to have some real nice documentation. Um, but there is, it's, it's a huge competitive edge. Like I always, always worried thinking that UV has to be so even. Like I, I haven't been able to test it with our UVB the same way, but we're definitely going to stress test the shit out of it. Uh, that's something that I don't really see people doing with their like UVA and UVB lights. Like I, I don't have any rock solid stuff or recommendations. You can use it for this long or use it for that, or this is going to burn it. Or maybe people have, but we haven't come across too much data on it where it's like rock solid. So uh, we're not relying on anybody else's data, but our own. Um, for when we recommend it. So we will, we already know like on a lot of people are having success using like a UVB, UVA for like an hour a day or even like a couple hours, but we'll, we're really going to test the shit out of it for you guys before we release it. So we are a hundred percent on oh. this is going to give you the gain. Cause here's another thing, guys, in my opinion, UVA just doesn't have the same efficacy as UVB. We've seen so many side-by-sides over the last four years and it's like, if you're only gaining like 1% in the, in THC and you're sacrificing your terpenes a little bit, like it's not, it's not a win in my opinion. And there wasn't like enough data, like everything is again, like so close where it, it doesn't really seem to make a difference. But when you see the side by sides, when you're adding UVB, that's where we see huge gains where you actually can see a two to 3% gain on your THC 
plus more of one to 2% on your terpenes. So that um, that's why we're, we're going to really try to push the envelope for people. We're going to make it so that's compatible with any light that you already have existing. So you can really push the limit on your own. What about the light controller? Are, are all of those lights that you mentioned going to be compatible with our controller as well? Yes. Able, let's yes. see. That's nice. Every single one of our lights will be able to have an RJ port that does plug in, including our predators, just everything you're going to be able to run off our controller. Um, makes it a little bit more expensive, but I think it's kind of uh, necessary. What's the point? On that There's note, a question. Can oh, you, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Charlene. Um, on that note, can you do an update on the app for the controller? Absolutely. Uh, first, someone said, are the predator lights waterproof? You could dump a bucket of water on them. They are fully waterproof. There is no issue at all on that. And sorry, you asked for an update on the app? Um, on the I, app, yeah. I would like to think that it's probably going to be done within a month at this point. Like I know we just took a bunch of time off where I know nothing was getting done for like the last three weeks. Um, but I was, I was told two months ago about a couple months. So I, I would think that we're like... Don't worry, we will be mentioning it the second it is. If you have our controller, we'll be posting it. And it's gonna, any existing controller sold will be compatible with our app. It will just work once uh, you'll just have to connect it. Um, one thing I'm also going to bring up with my with the controller that a lot of people have been asking about, well, as soon as you get it, because we have all different lights with different wattage, you have to hold on the wattage and put the different wattage for each channel you want. And as soon as you punch in that wattage, it will always be completely 100% accurate to tell you what wattage you have. So, and uh, do you have a time when the controller will be back in stock? It is going to be leaving China on March 8th. We're going to airship it. Last time, it was supposed to take seven days, and it, we shipped it right before Christmas, and it took like 10 or 11 days. And some people... Well, only one person lost their fucking mind over it. It was the end of the world. He was freaking out, saying he wants a refund and all this shit and blaming it on me. And I go, you know, shipping was out of my control with uh, during Christmas. I, we shipped it on the day. Anyways, what's so funny? He demanded a refund. He was all freaking out. And then it ended up showing up the next day. <laughs> so like if he just he would have got it now, he's. You know, he's doing it without a control. And you know what? I've been that guy one time, unre like when you ship something, and you're not aware of it and or it's supposed to be there by a certain time and you just get unreasonable. But I'm not like that anymore because I've been in the business with shipping for long enough where it's out of our control sometimes. And, and not... if they if so, if someone's got an AC Infinity um, controller, can you are your lights compatible with that? Well, I believe they use RJ12 and ours is RJ14. Um, we've had a lot of questions about that. That's actually one thing that I'm going to write down right now that I keep on forgetting to ask. Like, so we're probably going to, it's at the point now where, you know, we're probably going to start selling some adapters on like for RJ12 to RJ14 because like so many people are asking of, about it and like, are they asking about another controller and I'm not even familiar with the controller. But uh, yeah. I do want to chime in a little bit on that controller thing that you were bringing up about having to put the the water or the, the the voltages in or whatever it is for each driver. That information is found on your in your manual. If you oh. don't have your manual, you've lost your manual, you can still contact us and we can get you a manual um, just through a PDF. So um, I've done it a lot. So if you need your manual so you can get those numbers, let me know. Oh, um, Frost about, I thought the Borg has RJ45. So the Borg, the Borg does have R RJ45, but let's say you wanted to hook it up to two Hydro X's for whatever reason. We have a splitter so you can plug the RJ45 into like a four-way splitter. Like it has a one RJ45 port on our controller and an RJ14. So let's say you don't have the Borg. Um, you just literally plug in the splitter and you have four channels that you can plug into. And um, yeah. yeah. Um, what else we got? It's already been, what the heck? It's already been an hour and 10 minutes. So back to your nutrients. What's going on here? Uh, <laughs> oh, 
That just flew by. Holy shit. Um, back to the nutrients really quick. Um, so we can use like microbial mass or some of our other additives with those, right? Absolutely. It's going to be compatible with everything. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, also, energy rebates. When you speak about energy rebates, are you speaking only commercial or residential as well? In most cases, it is um, commercial, except for like in British Columbia now, for residential ACMPRs do qualify, but they have to save a minimum of 50,000 kilowatts a year, which works out to 28 lights and flower in um, at 12 and 12. And that's running like a, say a 700 watt fixture basically, or 22 lights in vegetation. Now in Oregon, I believe there is some sort of like rebate that you can do with the stores that where you can get like five to 10 lights where it does work out for medical where, you know, we're going to be looking into that soon. We just are a little bit overwhelmed with like the rebates as it is. Um, but if, Again, if you guys are in um, consumers energy, oh my goodness, in Michigan, our, our Voyager rebates for, sorry, um, 11.85 US, and that's including the AC incentive. It would actually rebate more if we, it would rebate for an extra $50 more if we didn't sell it for 9.99, but they can't give you any more than the actual fixture. So you're getting 9.99 plus, a thousand or 184 AC and or AC incentive. So you're getting it $184 back on top of the light on new construction and the Borg evolution rebates for 1234. So you're getting it. Yeah, no usually cost. the best rebates is if you're a new construction, but there's still um rebates for even if you're upgrading, you're you know, you're upgrading from say you have HPS or metal halide or CMH. And you're, and you're upgrading to LED, you might still qualify. So don't, With, don't hesitate to reach out. In Colorado, New Mexico, and Minnesota, it actually, it doesn't matter if you're upgrading from HPS or it's new construction. Um, right now, Colorado is $1.05 a watt towards the rebate, not including the air conditioning incentive. Um, Minnesota is $0.85 cents per watt, and New Mexico is $0.70 cents per watt. So it's like, and these are, it just... And like they're they don't have a limit on wattage per square foot either. So our spectrum tuning lights rebate extremely well. Um, so again, we also have other lights um that are we're not even listed for depending on uh what state you're in, that will just rebate better. Like we have a tarantula Vulcan 1100. We have, I believe, a long leg 1100. We have a tarantula torch 900. We have a master six bloom 900. That's all DLC listed. We also, um, all of our lights within them about the next two weeks are all going to have high voltage certification. And we're expected to have DLC certification on the Voyager and the tarantula Borg Evo by April 15th. Um, Good Any stuff. rebates for Canada? Absolutely. Well, right now, Quebec has a banging rebate. Our Voyager is $1,000. Our Borg Evo is $1,000. And the Borg is $1,000. And our smaller lights rebate for six forty dollars in Quebec. Um, Alberta. Ontario has a rebate. Depending on what size lights it is, it's two to $300 a light. Alberta, the rebate program ran out of money, but should be refunded pretty soon. And you're getting $200 a light. British Columbia, um, in there's BC Hydro and Fortis. In Fortis, um, our lights qualify for 570 a light. Every single one, as long as you're above 660 watts. If you go below 660 watts, it's around, it's only around 240 a light. And in British Columbia, um, there's a special incentive, but on average, on the HPS upgrade, we're seeing anywhere, it's kind of case by case, but we see anywhere from about 440 to... 570 that's without the special incentive and if they do qualify for the special incentive they'll qualify for 50 percent above that so it's um there's an awesome rebate and that's again for acmpr and commercial um, we have like just piles of peace people in british columbia getting the rebates right now it's uh it's insane 
so many people that weren't even aware of it. Like so many people have bought lights from companies had no idea that qualified for a rebate. The other thing is, is it's not just about having DLC. You have to be an actual Alliance member and there's quite a bit, few things to go along that go along with that. We'll see like yeah, for residential. Each, each state doesn't usually have only one power, you know, one utility company, one power company. So even in one state, you might have a different, like if you have a buddy or a friend in a facility across the state, they might have a better deal than you just because they have a different power company than you too. So uh, oh, um, when, you, when, you're, when you reach out to us uh, with questions and we, we, we start to look into these rebates for you, the information we could really use is what, what is your power company that you use, what, whether the facility will be using. Yeah. And uh, that, that really helps a lot so we can track stuff down. I would, Mitch is asking 347 volt. Yeah, all of our fixtures, we have two different sets of drivers. So we have one driver for all of our lights that will do 120 to 277 volt. And then we have another driver that does 277 to 480. So it does cover 347. They auto convert and we can uh, customize whatever plug you guys want. What we're also about to launch too for people guys is we can we can connect up to 10 lights under one plug. It's like with one extension so that you can just have like one, um, one plug, like say you got one 30 amp plug and, and running 10 lights rather than, um, you know, having a whole bunch of different plugs. So we are, we're going to offer that option too, just so uh, if people want it. So it's basically like one cord that just plugs in and runs the whole line and just, you know, connect to each one down the line. Um, so if that's something that's not like within four days, we're going to be able to start making them for people. It's going to be more like a custom thing, I think, but it, it's not like uh it's something like that we can airship too. So, you know, to, it, it's probably maybe like a 15 to 17 day lead time on those, but it, that definitely for a lot of people, you know, I, you know, I, I, I wish I kind of pushed this sooner because I'd seen other companies doing it. And I was like, well, why can't we do it? And they were, I guess, two years ago having issues sourcing the right wire. Like we could always do it with five to six lights, but I wanted to be able to do it with 10 lights like other um, people. But now we will be able to do it for up to 10. So I think, and, and not only that, we can also do it for two lights or four lights. So if you only want to have one plug for your two or four light setup, we can customize that for you, which is can be pretty convenient. It's also, well, just having an electrician come and do one plug is a lot easier than having to have four different plugs. Yeah, for sure. That's cool. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot cleaner in the room, especially in setups that have multiple lights. You know, you have cables hanging everywhere. That'll get some of that cable mess out of the way. Someone in chat asked about a three by three light. Our Tarantula Torch 480 is 33 by 33 inches. And um, it just, you're probably not going to use the full 480 watts, but we give you the ability to have that wattage if you need it. So I, I just like, um, if you're doing it also like a shipping container, we've just had a lot of companies come to us and say, there's nothing that fits better than this when they have like a row down the middle and they're doing like three foot wide beds, like our torch. And by the way, that is our one light. We don't have DLC listed that we're about to have DLC listed just because I felt really bad having a couple of craft micros buy them and then not get a rebate, you know, where they were buying a shitload of them and then where they should be qualifying if I had DLC certification. So that one fixture, uh, we will have DLC on that soon. Um, anyways, should we get, uh, or is it, oh, it's almost time. We'll give it 12 more minutes and we'll get the, get the um, contest going here. So we got a big crowd here tonight. Yeah, this is the first show that I've been able to be, uh, to have both our chat, the Zoom chat, the Zoom stream, and Bubble Man's chat all up at once, and I'm trying to keep up with everything. It's amazing. I got my eyes are my eyes are tired already from bouncing all up. <laughs> oh man, I was going crazy. I turned out I just had to reinstall google chrome i'm so stupid how i have problems for three weeks over this I'm trying to do all these updates and bullshit and i had to just reinstall it like i was getting this crazy leg um, oh so, like when i was typing i've heard that, that the chrome has had problems with uh, something with their ad blocking software is yeah it's getting crazy leg in different websites so well like i'd be typing last week and i'll type all my letters out and then i can will be like a five second delay and then I can't even see him. And then it's like, it all comes out. And I was trying to do that the last oh, two wow. weeks are on the show. I was going like, do it so funny is that I had a computer guy come here. And I'm, I'm like, we found a live stream. Cause I'm trying to recreate what was happening. 
and it, it wasn't doing it as bad, but it was lagging a bit. And he's like, that bothers you? That bothers you? He's like kind of trying to laugh at me. I was like, yeah, it bothers me. I'm trying to pay attention to hundreds of people. You think I got time? I'm going to sit there for two seconds to wait. Yeah. To out, and then I got to. <laughs> I was, he just kept talking. He couldn't believe it bothered me. I'm like, yeah, I, I go, yeah, I'll reformat my computer over this if we have to. Like what? I'll get a new computer. Oh, I can't going, live like this. That's going all in, man. <laughs> well, I haven't been able to do it. I wasn't able to update my computer for some reason, getting this Windows error for like three weeks. I thought that they were, it was related. <laughs> it's kind of funny. GML, you have any plans for any other products like tents or anything? Don't even get him started. Hey, there was a question in the enough. chat. There was oh, no, a question wait, in the wait. chat. We already have like samples <laughs> of tents. We just, I just put it on the back burner. We were going to bring in every size tent and we just haven't yet. So um, we probably are going to have a five by five and four by four tent. I was going to make it six foot, 10 inches. I originally was going to make it, or sorry, I was going to make it seven foot, 10 inches. I think I was going to originally make it taller and everyone's like, no. Because if if you have it any taller, it's got to be shorter than eight feet. I just know sometimes people hate these short tents or they want to have a little bit of reach. I like the option to extend it if you need to. So you can keep it, but then you can extend it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've seen the, the white walls. I think I can't remember what tent I saw, but it had the white walls instead of that silver. I was like, oh, that is sweet. <laughs> Yeah, like uh, I had a couple ideas to actually for a tent and I just I haven't done it, like making a really cool way to like lower and raise the light in oh, the that tent. That would be cool. So you mount it and then you can just literally really easily lower it and raise it so you don't ever have to mess around with it. Um, I had a pretty good idea for that. I just haven't Man, had. I've I haven't just, tent grown a lot, but every time I've done a tent grow, I've just is usually zip tied the light to the top of the tent <laughs> and, and try to utilize the whole space. I've never, I've always wanted the tent to be taller. I've never had the issue of wanting to hang it down. That's for sure. Oh, you never wanted to move it? No, I've always wanted to fucking go up with it because the plants seem to fill it up. and get. Oh yeah. Like when you're having, yeah. So that, that was my whole point is so that you can connect it and get it as high as possible if you need to and, and easily. And at the same time, drop it to run it. If you like, cause most of our lights, have such an incredible spread that in vegetation, if you have the ability to lower your lights, you don't really need to go over 25% or 30% power. You can hit lower it till you hit whatever PPFD target that you need. So, um, uh, there's a good uh, comment I wanted to bring up in uh, our Zoom chat. Uh, Rob says that YouTube unsubscribed him again. So, you might want to mention to everybody to make sure that they're subscribed if they want to get notifications and things like that. Well, I, it's a problem. It's been like, we were demonetized and like being throttled as much as possible. So yeah, if you, you might have to click the notifications and say, notify me because yeah, it's not the first time we've heard a lot of that to be quite honest. So it's just, I'm so used to it. I don't even it happens so much. I haven't even mentioned it. We've been on 25,000 for how long um, we, but our views have gone up. Like we used to within 24 hours, you know, we're, there'd be a minimum of three to 5,000 views on basically any video that we drop within 24 hours. And within seven days, they, you know, they used to be able to go potentially mini viral, I guess, but uh, not in these days, not without monetization. It's, it's literally, um, we need someone to buy it. That's like, at one point, YouTube was rent. Like, say if you search a name at one time, YouTube would, the algorithm would take you to, whichever had the highest views and it would go down in a row. It was awesome. Like, and you could really grow and it just, that's how the algorithm worked. It's like whoever has the most views and now it's completely controlled. So it, it's like, you could try to search for something. You could, you could try to search for something political. I'm just using it as an example and it will be purposely buried where you can't even find it or you have to go through four pages to find it. Or if you're trying to find something that doesn't align with YouTube's policies or views. And if it does align with their, or if it's something that they like or pump and you're trying to search for something else, they're gonna, they're just gonna put it right in front of you and make it like, I remember trying to find certain clips and I just can't find it. And it's like, I'm searching word for word what it is and they're putting something else out there so you can't find it. Awesome, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's super awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh. But hey, we're allowed to be on YouTube. We're allowed to do this stuff. Uh, I can remember when they wouldn't even dream of doing that. So 
progress, right? We just gotta keep going forward. I still remember the purge. Like I remember when they were like taking I remember that too, man. I remember watching you on Zoom, and that was the only thing I could watch you on. I remember (laughs) when crazy, I still remember crazy day go Pedro Pedro had just lost his YouTube channel like the day before for pressing Ross. And so crazy Dago does a stream and he's like, I remember watching it and go, Holy fuck, buddy. What are you doing? He's like, YouTube, this is legal flower medicine. Look at this. And he's like going off, like getting mad at YouTube in the video and like pressing Ross. And I just remember thinking like, you're, what are you, you're taking a stand. And then he, his channel got nuked overnight. I was like, holy shit. Like, Half the people I know lost their channel, but I, that was self inflicted Oh, I remember when you walked, when you walked through your buddy's, uh, what was it, a CO two extraction lab or something, and did that? Oh, we, we got live stream. Sh- yeah, we live stream <laughs> doing a short distillation, uh, short path distillation. We we're showing my buddy had a. That really had been nice right technique. around that same time. Yeah, and he, yeah, it. I got a strike on my channel. That's right. I couldn't stream. That is right. Like I, got, I remember being so upset about that. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> no bit the silver bug we're not doing what they don't like and actually rosin's okay to show on youtube now there's actually like not much like um to actually have a video taken down even though we we have like a group of haters that likes to come and attack certain videos so we i sometimes get a strike but then i appeal it and i win every single time so like we have been, um, we've had a few different attacks where like everybody we literally are putting in complaints to the point where we get a strike when we're not supposed to for him. Like there's clearly no hate speech or bullying going on here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Sometimes spark can be pretty harsh, but. Hey, I stand <laughs> just... by my words. <laughs> 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 yeah. Hey GML, uh, what uh what lights is Terpy running over there in Thailand? Um he's got well we actually he had our Master 6 Bloom but we made a custom one for him a Master 6 Bloom 750 just to give him the extra wattage. So yeah, he's got Master 6 Blooms and Master oh, V4s. But, sweet. Um oh, by the way guys, Terpy highs on YouTube. He's um wait, can we pull up his channel and just share it so everybody can see it? Um, he's official team GML, like, well, it'll be official in a couple of days, but we've already talked and he, we're going to be, he's going to be joining our panel sometimes. And we're going to be working with him on his channel. He's actually based out of Thailand. He moved from Canada to start growing in Thailand. He's got like a 200 plus light operation and he's about to set up a nursery. And anyways, we're going to get him all set up with a bunch of our newer all stuff right. over there. I can share it if you want here that way. Sure. Okay. Do, can I make it co-host? Or- Okay. Oh no, you got you got it. Let me see. Do I got it? There we go. Share. I don't know if you can see it, but this looks like on my page. Yeah. So um, look at this. Oh yeah. So like here, yeah. Click on that. Let's show it. This is him building. He's like a one. He's like a. He's like a such a fucking hard worker, man. Like he, like he literally has incredible work ethic. I just have nothing but respect for it um he's running like a 300 lighter by himself man like doing everything like building everything and doing it himself he just finally got someone out to help him but this guy is a machine man and um he's got a like he's literally doing everything himself i have nothing but the highest level of respect and i'm just very happy to welcome him on to team gml love those pumps too those dab those pumps are sweet from germany yeah I, i've actually had those like I, i've you don't like them? Really like them? No, a lot of people really like them. I'm just, I've had such uh, good luck with these Grand Foss ones that are similar thing. They're just a little bit smaller. They're not as big. Um, but yeah, those, let's just, uh, why don't we fast forward it into the, let's see where the grow. We'll get into, this is one of his rooms that he was setting up here. So yeah, it's a pretty sick. Oh, he was doing like a crazy pheno hunt. He ended up having to cut down, like, I think basically the room because like 50% of stuff was like showing perms and stuff. He was trying to do like a crazy pheno hunt. I was like, it was insane, man. Um, Is this showing up okay on YouTube? Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. It's I a little choppy. Do you know what? We're, next time, um, what we need to get you set up with is OBS, OBS. camera. 
because yeah, you can, you can play that. it through. Well, in the future, we'll get it set up because then anytime you're displaying anything, it can just be a little smoother. But yeah, if, well, let's go over to the next room. He's got another room that's probably already going on here. Um, it's, it's sick. Like, uh, we're definitely, uh, we're definitely at some point team GML will be going down there. He's got it. They've, they've set up their own actual cafe too. He's got the Turpy Heist cafe, like dispensary cafe kind of thing going on. Um, he says there's a really nice massage. That, across that's the street uh, a Turpy, a Turpy <laughs> cafe. Is it, is that mean that, is it a, is it a food cafe or is it like Terps cafe? Like he's giving you dabs everything like you're to oh, I like that. into, that's yeah. what you'll find me i'm gonna definitely get him to set up uh a code grandmaster level if you're going across the street for a massage <laughs> <laughs> look after you you get a special bonus <laughs> just kidding guys <laughs> um okay so yeah these ones are a lot bigger here now oh yeah so well, some of these wines like they were i remember seeing like more updated videos where he's got like plants going through the lights like you know growing all these genetics like some of them up straight through insane. where those lights are now what's that they're grown up straight through where those lights are yeah. right now yeah wow. like they i don't know if it was this room um but it's a uh, yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to coming down well just going to thai i've never been to thailand either and now that it's legal and there's weed there and oh I have edibles ready for me I like how we put a union everywhere there, huh? Yeah, I was the, I was waiting for Even you to for say something valves. about that. Well, I was I about I, to make a joke, Sanya, but you, you were just doing this. Well, I, I'm like, I really love. I, I was I couldn't remember it the other week when we were talking about cam locks. I love having cam locks, um, being able to put them on my motorized ball valve on um on basically any motorized ball valve any filter or anything that can have a leak like even a pressure reducer um because for some reason like i i have this weird thing like every six months or a year it will decide to fail on me and start leaking from inside so kind of annoying having to cut it out <laughs> if you like they probably should be on unions but i've always just kind of glued them on but now i'm do everything with cam locks like i have it set up so if one of my not like I'm going to have a failure anytime, but uh, it seems like if I do have one. I have it ready where I can swap it out on seconds. Same with my pump. I have cam locks on my pump and I have an extra pump. Not that I've ever had one that. fail. That was cool. Yeah. You like, you can you swap, just swap out. it right out. 10 seconds to swap out a pump. If you want, I like, the, I have a backup pump. Uh, I remember I got, ended up getting like a crazy deal on these grand Foss one horse one. So I bought like seven of them when I did. So I use them for irrigation on our property too. I like how he's uh, color. He's color coded his uh, his PVC. His his drain is all blue, which is cool. Yes, it's a it's a really tight setup. So yeah, it looks like they're getting tall in this video here now. I don't know, and I don't see buds yet. So this is probably the room that ended up getting really tall. I don't know if this um, not wrecked for long in Thailand. Going to be very dicey the next eighteen months with the inflammation of the TGE. Existing laws, hundreds of companies are in line for closure. Yeah, I I'll tell you, man. I I'd be nervous about it. But he here's the one thing is um to do business over there, you have to partner or have somebody in your company that is at least Thai. But yeah, man, it's it's hard to imagine like what can happen there. At least it's like legal and they're not locking people up for it over there and throwing away the key. So They've made such big, big progress. It kind of sucks. The reason why they're pushing back is uh, truly people are abusing the program like crazy. From my understanding, it's like a hub for international shipping everywhere, basically. Um, it's like a, it's like a, the Wild West, but I guess they're trying to close it down. It's like Oklahoma, guys. No, I'm just kidding. I, I know Oklahoma at one point was kind of like the wild west, but it's uh, still kind of is a little bit. And they're trying to no, but that with the regulations, we have a client over there that no is really having they've really tightened up things and are making things way more difficult for these larger operations there. There the first couple of years, three years even, there was no there was no over no oversight, no security protocol. So like at the same time. In Oklahoma, we had just put in an application the year before here in Oregon, and we were going to have to spend $90,000 on our video surveillance alone, just for the video surveillance. 
And at that same time, Oklahoma had no security uh, requirements for grows, period. A, a field by the side of the road with not even a fence up around it was legal at that time. And just to oh. sort of like the discrepancy in the laws and how crazy it was at that time. First, just There's, insane. We, we've been in touch with a guy that runs it. it it's uh, he's in Colorado. I forget what town it is, but it's four. It's like a four four hundred and twenty acres of in a town of Gross, and it's the Wild West. There's no permits or regulations for anything. Like they can build anything. I was just like, oh man, I'm so so jealous. Um, like fifth about fifteen years ago here on the island, that's how it was. You could you could build a shop and put a suite in it, build another one right next to it, and then when the laws come happened and everything got grandfathered in that was already existing. But it's mm. like now I actually have farm status, so I don't have to follow like I don't need permits the same way normal people do. Like I can build a shop without a permit, but I still have to go through all the steps because mm. of farm status, which a farm status is very nice to have. Um, OK, let's at uh, 735. Charlene, let's uh, bring up Nightbot. Who's feeling yeah. lucky tonight? I wanted to bring up uh, Bogodan and uh Bubble Man's chat brought up this, and I saw this the other day too. Uh, shout out to Ukraine who uh, legalized medical cannabis. Man, they're they're fighting a war and they're getting stuff done. Why is our country, United States? I'm looking at you. Why is our country, <laughs> you know, behind in Ukraine during a war can pass some legalization federally? Come on, man. Come on. Uh, speaking of that, if you are an international company, um, I've actually partnered with one of my friends who's he's exporting. Well, he's the first person to export to, I think, Brazil and Thailand. But he's Brazil. He's exporting all over the world right now. So if you want to get hooked up with the goods or something that I can verify that's good, reach out and I'll hook you up with him. Um, I've been kind of just he's doing big stuff. Well, he's exporting anywhere from like three to five thousand pounds a month right now out of Canada, depending on where it's going. Jeez. Mm hmm. Um, you know what? He actually needs a hook. Like in, you're allowed to export hemp from United States. Is there like, I think you are, aren't you? To other countries? No, unless there's a single state that's legalized it somehow, but I don't think so. Okay. I wasn't sure. Cause I know that's kind of one of the things that's going to happen once federal drops is that's going to open that up and that's going to be a huge, a huge thing. So that'd be interesting to see how that plays out. Okay, uh, wait up. Let's get a link in Bubble Man's chat so everybody can come over to participate for the... Let's... Oh, yeah, we're about to give away a light. If you're in Bubble Man's chat, you want to make your way to the Grandmaster Level channel YouTube because that's... There we go. Can hop on the chat. link and come over. We'll give everybody another five minutes to be able to qualify for the light. Just make a comment in chat once you get there to get entered. It'll automatically pick you up. Oh, someone said, how is everything getting more expensive? I have to bring something up that I saw. I don't know if it's truly real, but I believe it because everything is so expensive in Canada. I saw this girl, woman, who is compl she's from Canada and uh, in Ontario, and someone she knew in across the border was getting these carrots from the same farm that comes in Ontario that's close to her, and they... I, it was three times the cost in Canada. I shit you not. And it was transported from Canada to the USA. Um, like our inflation, anybody that's listening in Canada knows exactly what I'm talking about. It is so stupid now. Like it's off the charts. Like it is like, it is insane. The cost of food and produce. It, like it is, it's more than I've ever seen by far. Like I used to buy lots of expensive fruit and stuff that, you know, you could say it was exotic special stuff that's air shipped in and everything. It's just like you, I couldn't even believe like you get a little tiny bag. It's $200. It just seems like it's so crazy here. I'm sure. It's always going to be profitable for you to start pulling the uh, cannabis plants out from one of those lights and just put some produce <laughs> in there, dude. Well, um, ideally I want to be, there's certain things that I do as soon as we're done all this R and D in Saskatchewan, like ideally I, there are certain things I want to be growing year round. Um, well, we're going to get a freeze dryer this year. So that's another thing is we're going to be bulking up on all our fruit and freeze drying it. One of my friends is from the Okanagan and his neighbors got about 200 acres of apples of all different types. And we literally, I can get as many boxes of apples as I want for free. So my friend is planning on coming out here with like truckloads of apples and what we're going to do. And like, we're going to freeze dry like 
app we gets peaches and apples for free so in the we're gonna just freeze dry all a gigantic freeze dryer not one of those little home units Beautiful. well no we're gonna be getting like a pretty nice commercial size one okay uh, but anyways i'm gonna be like our plan is to be picking and freeze drying like all our blueberries strawberries raspberries we've got two acres of it right and all our plums and everything like that obviously eating lots too but our goal is to freeze dry it so i have enough for my kids lunches and everything throughout the whole winter time i don't want to buy like strawberries I, I they're the most they have so many pesticides on it it's disgusting like i and they're they're just not good like the store-bought ones like from what you produce at home it's just like our blueberries you can't buy those in stores like i'm sure if you went to a farm that's like an organic farm you could get something the same sort of quality but we have you know 11 different ver or I'm going to say 11 or 13 varieties of blueberries. I can't remember the exact time. We got all these different types with like just the taste different too. And they're beautiful tasting. Oh, I love it. I'm excited for berries this year. Um, I love blueberries. I love all berries, but I really love blueberries. <laughs> well, you're definitely going to have to come out here and try them this year, man. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Yeah. 283 um, people in on this thing. That's okay. crazy. Okay. Blueberries um, are so good for you too. Oh man. We still have them. Like that's what I, that's when I can kind of been eating this junk food at nighttime or I call it junk food, frozen blueberries. Like that's another that's thing. I've been junk food. <laughs> that's, that's I, not... They're good for your yeah. dogs too. Yeah. Very good for your dogs, which the chat's wanting to know where your dog's at GMO. <laughs> oh, she's inside. I just, they, I haven't been, it likes to come she likes to come in and out too much during the show so i've got them inside um yeah we've been we got our dogs like our our dogs started getting these ear infections man and it was like like these bad yeast ear infections so we put them all on raw food now so they're eating raw food and it's like they love it so much the other like and we were wondering if we were giving them enough because they still seem hungry but we're like we're definitely giving them enough but my one dog yesterday <laughs> like the storm she's i've never seen her she wanted my other dog's food so bad even though she already ate hers and she was looking at her growling with all her hair up i've never seen her do it in my whole life it's kind of was like whoa i had to get mad at her i thought she was gonna lunge out i've never seen her they love this food so much so can you give a little more details on that food please because i have been thinking about switching my dogs to a raw food diet too well, what's funny is that we, so we get this raw food diet and it's got like veggies and everything kind of mixed in. And it's like a block. You just dethaw it the night before. Um, and we ran out of that. And then she went and bought like a different type of raw food. Our dogs wouldn't even touch it. I couldn't even believe it. I'm like, what? They would not even eat it. And I'm like, there's, there's something wrong with this. Like it's gotta be really shitty tasting or something because they would they eat dry food they love dry food but like to not to give them wet food and they wouldn't even touch it i couldn't even believe it we even put some try to put some egg in with it too and they just ate the egg and left it they wouldn't touch it wow that's so wrong think, with what stuff. is wrong yeah i'm like what is well we ended up returning it um it was expensive too and i'm thinking what kind of shit are they putting in that this other person that's making it is like a good farm or like i trust there's just so much shady shit so you would get it local then Yes. yes okay. we'll do um, yeah, there's just so much shady shit going on with like, well, like we, some of this dog food you see, it's so fucking cheap. And you just imagine what the fuck they're putting in there. You know what I mean? Just trash. So like, another uh, question, has it helped your dog's ears at all? Uh, well, we haven't. It hasn't been long enough, but it seems it, it appears to be because like they were shit like shaking their heads like crazy. And like every day I'm now like putting stuff in their ears and then like cleaning their ears and they absolutely hate it it's really hard to do i've been trying to get them used to it but it seems to i think it's improving in the first week i here's the thing with cane courses too like a lot of times you have their ears cropped and like a people think it's cruel to do i can tell you it's not because any dogs that don't have their ears cropped and, and that can have the moisture from having it down they have ear infections and they're prone to them i've seen i've owned I've owned five cane corsos in my life and one of them didn't have or had its ears cropped and that one didn't have any issues and i know other people like literally like anybody that has them with ears i've seen them have issues it's not every single person but like at some point in their life i've seen ear infections and i really believe it 
um, it's to do with like moisture too. Like if you have them cropped and it's oh, they look kind of crazy, but like the air is getting in and it, um, I think it's just a more better hygiene for them. And like not doing it to any way to be cruel or any way, like it's cruel what they're going through. It's sad to see them going through. Oh my God, they're so miserable when they're like that. One of our dogs, he's has allergies, such extreme allergies and He's the same way. We even spent like $170 a month on a shot for him, and we had to go pick up some medicine last week for his ears because he was just so miserable. Head out poultry, it's uses infections. It's a yeast. Yeah, it is definitely a yeast infection. Um, yeah, and we basically have cut it out, and like a lot of the dry food base that we have was chicken base. I can't stand the smell of like a fish based dry food and then having the dogs eat it. I just can't. I, I don't personally eat fish. Um, I grew up a vegetarian. So like the, like I eat beef and chicken now, but the smell of fish, I just, I hate it. Like I absolutely hate it. It scares me. I'm afraid of it. Oh my God. I've been feeding my dogs this freeze dried cod treats right now. Talk about the stankiest asses in the world <laughs> right now. Like oh, literally no. last night we were about to just Oh God, it was so bad. And I was like, what the fuck is wrong with them these days? And then I grabbed that cod to give him a tree and that sh I opened that bag and it just smelled so bad. And I was like, oh my God, this is it right in here. Uh, I love my dog so much. I, I have no problem with them coming up on the bed and sleeping too, even though they're a hundred plus pounds. But Mrs. GML kind of gets mad at me when I do it. But if I'm ever lying on the bed, I call them up and cuddle. I love my dogs. Oh, yeah. I love horses. I am an animal lover. Um, what's really cute is we got a cat, and it's the first time I've ever had a cat and a dog. Like, I grew up with cats, but we haven't. And, like, it was such an awesome transition where the cat just did so well. And what's really cool is she's, like, or the cat's really good buddies with Storm. Like, they really like each other. Lucy's a little mean to the cat or sometimes chases the cat around, like, a little bit, like, Cat doesn't really trust Lucy, but like when Storm comes in, Cat comes right up and bumps his bumps her head and starts rubbing and purring. And like they it's so cute to like come into the living room and see them like touching each other, lying down together. It's so cute. Um, anyways. Okay, guys. Well, it's uh 746. I've been rambling on like this. We got 388 live. That's so sick. We ready for the giveaway? We are so we're um, you know what? We're going to give away a Master 6 Bloom with a 450 nanometer bar. What the heck? Nice. Okay. Oh, damn. Nice. Making Mandy work. She's not going to be happy about that, GML. <laughs> um, Over okay. 300, 302. Let's, uh, let's roll it. All right, you guys. Good go. luck, everybody. Three, two, one. Three or four, two people got in at the end. Oh, we got I2, oh, shit, I don't know. I2, Ed Dragon. Congratulations. <laughs> right. The Dragon Slayer. I think it's like an LED, right, maybe? I don't know. LED I don't know Dragon I don't know Slayer. About. LED, where are you? Wait, let's get, you? let's get, Matt, or let's get Russ at GML it's Army. Russ at GMLArmy.com, right? Yep, yep, that's me. There you go. Or someone pin that. Someone pin that. Or can I have to? Oh. Replace pin message. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, oh, you know what? Screw it. Let's give away another light. I know Mandy will give me shit. <laughs> <laughs> but... Ah! Oh, I see why you're getting on like my I email, so she doesn't know about it. Yeah. Week, I right? I haven't seen her tonight, so. We had such a crazy week that I would feel guilty not doing it for, for the people. And I appreciate the support of the people that we are getting, guys. It's just, it's unreal. Like, what happened in the last couple months, it's uh, surreal. And now there's nothing that can stop us. There's only one place for us to go right now, guys. And that's number one in the world. Well, we're already like, there. But, yeah. No, I'm. I'm no, but we're we're not beating fluence. <laughs> oh yeah, that's those true. type of people. But well, we got the number it one. It is light. within our reach. I do think it's possible. It might take us a year or two, but there's there's only one place for us to go. And when our the tarantula predator launches, 
Um, we're going to have world attention. Like I wouldn't be surprised if our team is doing news interviews all over the world because it's a lot bigger than cannabis. We're talking about ending pesticides on food crops and like, uh, you know, and not yeah. just that, like we're like, uh, we're talking some flower crops, some of these flower crops that people do for a living, their biggest issue is sp spider mites and thrips are their two number one. Like I'm, we're dealing with someone that's got eight hectares of flowers right now. And um, we're like in greenhouses. And when I told them what I have, they didn't believe me. <laughs> like they use so many pesticides and everything. They said, it's too good to be true. And but the thing is, it's, this is, it is too good. Well, the to be thing true. that makes it, it really kind of cool is I love when people tell me that because I say, well, you can continue to do what you're doing and add this. <laughs> That's what makes this so great is you don't have to stop what you're doing. If you don't want to, if you truly don't believe it's me, there. you want to keep your, all your IPM practices, you can do that and add this and it's going to make it better. Or, or the thing is I'll add it and eliminate 95%. If yeah. You want. You're going to eventually you see how it works. The beginning, there's just no need to like one spray to knock them down and use this and you've beat them. So, and that's why it, it, it's a, it just really is, like I said, it's a big deal. And that's what obviously going to give us an, a really big boost in the next couple of months, because if uh, everybody in the world, if they don't want to use pesticides or predator bugs, there's only one place to come. Now, I'm sure people are going to copy us, but once we release it, we're going to be about a year ahead of everybody else, or at least a, a good 10 months. And again, our utility patent really protects on what we're doing. So people aren't like, even if they copy us, they will not be able to use it the same way. Um, so anyways, we're again, pretty excited. It was like, we, we got, you could say we got lucky. We got lucky. We tried something and it worked insane. Um, okay. Well, let's roll it one more, one more so, master six bloom and a blue booster. Okay. All right, here we go. Three, two, one, Patrick. Yeah. Congratulations. Congratulations. So you if you're a winner tonight, Patrick. email me, Russ at GML Army, your contacts. Yeah, I'll be trying to scam because I'm going to be sending Russ a <laughs> screenshot of these too. So yeah, please take a screenshot of the about page when the page was um, started. To, and yeah, that's one thing that we've been having an issue with people trying to cheat. Terpy highs. Okay, is that okay, guys? Wait, there's Terpy Highs in chat. Hold on a second. Yeah, he's on the chat now. Yeah, I just saw him go through right there. I would. I don't know if were you here at the beginning, Terpy. We were featuring your channel, seeing that how you're officially Team GML, and that we have a massive collaboration coming. Um, we definitely get a link underneath for people in the website, but we we actually went to your YouTube page and highlighted you already. So we, um, the word is out, man. We were actually talking about. Uh, how impressive your work ethic is. And I don't say that easily. Um, oh, shit. Adrian's representing Vancouver Island. Okay, so I, I don't see Patrick in chat. Patrick. It's my brother's name. One of my brothers. Yeah, um, I haven't seen the... Uh, I haven't seen him yet. Well, congratulations, guys. Yeah, big congrats. I can't believe that we have just flown through that. It's 7.52 now. What is going on? <laughs> Doesn't even feel like it. Time flies, man, when you're having fun. You must be having a fun time. Yeah. Starfish. Do we see Patrick in there yet? It's I haven't seen just him. Just the first yeah. name, Patrick. Oh, no, yeah. There's another Patrick that said me. Sorry, Patrick Pearson. There was somebody named just Patrick. But if they don't respond, maybe we'll just give it to another Patrick. Patrick, you need to the single letter. <laughs> Patrick, you need to uh, respond here. <laughs> Someone's a chat bot. <laughs> That's somebody's Patrick? third account. They're trying to log in again. Hold on, give them time. Oh. <laughs> Despicable Dabs is, identifies as Patrick. <laughs> I'm going to identify it as a lottery winner tonight. Um, yeah, I think we think we might have to re-roll this thing. We don't have anybody claiming it. Oh, shit. Adrian's representing Parksville? What? Whoa, that's where whoa, one of our warehouses is. We have, that's one of our warehouses is. 
Speaking of warehouses, we're going to be building like a, the craziest <laughs> warehouse here right on my property. It's going to be nice. like 10,000 square feet for our Canadian operations here. Hell yeah. Yeah. Badass. I am not seeing Patrick, guys. Hey, Patrick, oh. you need to come in here and claim this right now or say something or else the, that was a... Uh, what is going on? Are you... Say we give. Uh, he might. Kinda... Maybe he dipped out after the first one. This is yeah. kind of cool because all the people that just watch for the giveaway and dip. I think they're gonna get. Okay. Gonna miss out, well, gonna hey, miss guess what? We're gonna give Patrick a couple minutes, and if not to claim it, you're right. I think he left. Yeah, I think he dipped out after that first one. We'll give him like what? It's fifty-four oh, to. Oh, 56. Patrick Pearson's putting his hand up. <laughs> He's like, I'm right here, man. <laughs> Unfortunately, Patrick, it was just Patrick. It didn't have the last name. Um, I think you're right. I think he's gone. Because he would have said something. Yeah, the chat's going slow enough. Yeah. Oh, Patrick, I'm sorry, man. Patrick's got one more minute. Yeah. Or probably a Let little less. One more minute. It looks like we're going to be rolling it. Oh, shit. Yeah, see? <laughs> the roll's happening. Poor Patrick. Oh, shit. <laughs> Chat's not putting up a fight for you, Patrick. No, Patrick. <laughs> they were quick <laughs> to be like, re-roll. <laughs> Everybody's like, no, it's that. He's done. He's gone. He doesn't want it. He volunteered it away. Mm. He said to rerun it. Well, it is for people that are here. So if you uh, decided to leave after the first one, um, yeah, um, okay, I'm going to give you a one minute. It's seven fifty-six. If we don't see, I don't think you're coming. No, I, I haven't got. A, I haven't got an email either. I just checked. <laughs> okay, Chris Johnson is crying for Patrick. Okay, who's feeling lucky, guys? All right, you got two minutes to get over in to the giveaway. Did you oh, get you're... the first I... the first winner, Spartan? Did they hit you up yet? Nobody has, okay. no. Nope. He's gone. Yeah, I guess he, he didn't stay around. Well, I didn't think I was going to bust this. He left the second I we did the first contest, man. We did see the first winner, though, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay, cool. All right. Well, uh, um, I'm, you got about 30 seconds left as soon as the clock turns 7.57. Mr. Django. Um, yeah, <laughs> man, you the, are the a regular. Insane. The first winners in chat, I just saw them say so their their name just scrolled past. The L E the L two E D. <laughs> okay, well, um Yeah, let's uh it's seven fifty seven. All right. Give him a minute case his phone died. Randy. Oh, man, I feel like we've him, been super I don't think he's all a the regular chances. and he just came for the test and he left after the first one. Or else we would have seen it. So um yeah, it would have showed you guys up. Guys, gotta be able to claim it and email, like acknowledge it after you win, guys. See, that's what you leave just like that when you realize you don't win, and then GML comes around. And he's like, "Yeah, let's give away five more lights." You're screwed. <laughs> Mister J Rock says, "Can I get in touch with Loki Grow?" I have been in touch with Loki Grow um, in the last couple of months. I I've talked to him a couple of times. He's he's doing good. All Wait. right, we ready? Um, okay, yeah, I guess we're gonna roll it, guys. All right, everybody. Three. He's gone. Two. Two. One. Roll it. Roll Dog roll pounds. Roll. Dog, Dog pounds. pounds. Oh, I like the name. Me too. Dog pounds. You better fucking hurry up and roll it in too. Oh, <laughs> Dog man. Pounds. <laughs> Looks like he it could be a Cleveland. I don't like Cleveland. the name, man. Yeah, yeah. maybe. Uh, I'll just leave it on the screen for now. Gonna be. Oh my God, this chat is crazy fast. Right there, bam! We got oh shit! Winner. Where are you at? Dog found. Said yes. Cool. Congrats. God, I like the name, man. I like the name. They used to call me the Dog Father. <laughs> 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 I went from T-Bone or I went from my street name Mikey to T-Bone 
to T Dog to the Dog Father eventually. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Talking, going old school. <laughs> I used to have a lot of dogs. <laughs> <laughs> and make sure the, it's pinned right to the top of the chat. Make sure you email me your context. I have a feeling you're getting it. I think so. <laughs> 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 man. Patrick, someone's rebranded. Hey, 650 Blackwater. He's probably won two. I think you've won two lights over the last two years. So, yeah, the yeah with the, I guess the, when we're getting up to 400 <clears throat> people, the odds go down a little bit. Normally, it's like uh, we got only 200 people, but it's still really, really good. I got the first winner. They they checked in, so that's cool. 8 p.m. Yeah, GML's got stories. You bet I do, man. Uh, a lot. Way too many. <laughs> um, hey, Ken, GML for p.m. Well, well, I will definitely reshape the country, man. We're going down a bad path right now. Can somebody explain, like, how long... Isn't there supposed to be an election? Hasn't Buddy been in power for eight years? Are we just sure <laughs> no? I don't even know how Canadian politics work, man. I'm Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, uh, up until 2016, like I said, I didn't even know what the difference between a conservative, a liberal, a Democrat, or anything was. How? Where do you uh, learn that stuff in the school of hustling? <laughs> <laughs> I honestly, I didn't know. Yeah, I don't. I don't uh, now though. I don't know much about Canadian politics myself, to be honest with you. I have a hard time trying to figure out the the politics here in the United States. You know what? Being politic free is like it's just the absolute best. Life is so much nicer in a sense. Like, uh, and I I think I brought this up before. Like, I remember bringing up some politician to Mandy, and she's like, "Who's that?" Like, <laughs> she doesn't like you could name any famous politician in the states besides like the president, and she wouldn't know. She doesn't pay attention to any of that shit at all. And like I in my whole life, like I think I'm so much happier after well, like in 2016, like YouTube exposed you kind of to it, but it's like so much like I'm I, I think it's just such a better life not paying any attention to it. I don't know. And that's how it gets bad. <laughs> well, I just feel like <laughs> I just like how it's gone these days and stuff, it's just oh toxicity, man. Yeah. Definitely. I think there's not, I don't know, like I said, I don't know a lot about Canadian politics, but I can say in the United States and in Michigan locally, the biggest problem is people don't participate. There's no participation by the people. A lot of people don't want to even vote, let alone participate by going and talking to the people that are supposed to be representing you and telling them, hey, how do you feel about, or what is your stance on this? And if it's not what your stance is, you could add question and say, why? Because this is my stance. This is why I believe this way. And you're supposed to be representing me. And uh, you, you can get a lot of change when a lot of people think things don't change or it's corrupt or, or whatever the excuse that has been mind driven to our into our minds forever to keep us from questioning anything and keep us from, from going and affecting change. Um, push against that. Push against that, and, and, and you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised how much stuff you can get done. See, the problem when, where I think I entered politics, it wasn't really entering it. We were fighting for legalization when Justin Trudeau came in, like was going into power. It was the promise of legalization, and at the time, Stephen Harper had put a bill in where six plants are over. It's two years plus a day minimum sentence. Oh, and so it was scary. So like I had never. I'll be honest, I had never voted in my whole life or ever up until that point or ever paid attention to anything to do with politics because I was hustling and you just don't pay attention to that shit. But this was serious. And uh, I converted probably about 150 people, including my mom and everybody in my family, like that we're going to vote conservative um, because for the country's reasons, there's probably a lot more like what they've done to the country since, yes, they legalized weeds, but they did a horrible job of it. And they've really screwed up our country is what I feel like. Like just, uh, I don't know, like we're at the worst inflation of my life. Yeah. Well, I know COVID, uh, COVID obviously maybe played a part. I can't just blame a certain government for it, but I'll tell you, I don't like how things are. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I, like, and I, I don't care if it's not a popular opinion. You 
Like this carbon tax on farmers is what what causes all the food to fucking go up. And it's like you can't afford they can't afford to do this. Like there needs to be they need to cut this out so the farmers can actually not uh, can afford to farm. I don't know. That's about as far as I'm going into it, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I do um I don't know if I should say enjoy. I do like to see the uh, the videos of what the farmers are doing over in uh, Europe right now in protest and protest and some of their stuff. <laughs> There's just blocking the roads and, and taking, you know, big piles of manure and dropping them on the, the steps of the politicians. I'm like, wow, that, where was that that's the like, whole time before that? You know, <laughs> that's well, awesome. And, and I, love I, think, I think it was the Netherlands where they all, like all the farmers rose up and took control and became their own party. And that's like so awesome. Yeah. Everything for the people. And I don't know the exact details, but it sure sounds freaking good. Like it sounds good for the people. Like it's like the people took over and it's like real farmers were the one, like some lady that was a farmer took charge of this whole thing and ended well, up. That's what, that's what they did was they played, they, they played their game and that's how you win you just you know you go and start you know burning their house down you're going to go to jail for that but if you play their game you start your own party and you beat them at their own game then what the hell are they going to do but lose i, I love that yeah like and someone just brought up something what they're trying to like this thing about people talking about the footprint and growing at home and saying it's bad i think it it's it's misleading because like what they're trying to say is that like say if you're growing in a bed and how much soil and space it takes with how much water, what they're trying to compare that to is if you're going vertically in a tower hydroponically. And I think it's a stupid comparison, but that's why when they're saying, oh, it's 90% less, like you in a system like that, it isn't seriously 90% more efficient. Like you're using 90% less water and everything and space because you're growing it vertically and you're doing it hydroponically. Does that a better way of growing than hydro than organically for yourself? Probably not. And I think it's a stupid thing to say, but that's the one thing when they're comparing that and trying to say it's, oh, it's bad for the environment. I think they're just trying to compare the footprint of doing it hydroponically versus a garden. And it's a stupid comparison. But it really is legitimately that more efficient. And the reason why I know that is we have been working on a design and done quite a bit of R&D into, you know, these towers where the water just falls all the way through. We're, we're going to be coming out with two, um, three different towers, guys. One is like a seven foot nine or seven foot ten. One is a five foot nine. And then one is going to be like a two and a half foot for in your uh, kitchen to be able to just grow. And each one, it ha they have four bars that come off them for lighting. So you'll be able to oh, grow. That's cool. You can grow anything in them, like strawberries, lettuce, you name it. You can grow even watermelons, but you need like a support. Nice. And um, yeah, we've. Like I said, we, we, you know, bought a couple different companies and just found so many ways to improve it. And we have like literally close to two different dozen changes we're making and then doing our own mold to have our own of it. And like I said, that's when people are asking about products, that's going to be coming this year. I'm going to say it's about six months away. We just have to wrap up these few other projects and then we're going to be diving into the microgreens where we're also looking at bringing seeds to canada and usa for microgreens in a very big way we've already started the process to be able to import and we're just looking for the right connections because right now there's two there's two main companies that have a monopoly on it straight up you want microgreen seeds in bulk you're buying it from two major companies and there's nobody else um and it's like uh, we, the reason why we want it we want to like sell it with kits that have so much seeds. So when you buy something like, like I'm not interested in making money on the seeds. I'd be happy to break even. And for people when they're buying our lights, be able to get like a two month supply of microgreens. You know what I mean? And that is kind of our goal um, to be able to just, because it's ridiculous, like paying $4 for 25 grams of, or four or $5 for 25 grams of micro seeds. It's just, and I'm not saying, it's still going to be cheaper doing that and growing it than buying it in a store. But I, I just I mean, like if by us going directly to the source and bringing it in, uh, we're really we're going to make it affordable where it does make sense to really do it. And you'll be able to save that much money and also be sustainable with like really good micronutrients for yourself and family. Is the is the goal. Well, guys, I. Is there anything else? Both people contacted me, so we're good on the winners. Okay. Um, 
Is there anything else or does anybody want to come up on the panel and ask a quick question? Let's drop the link in YouTube. Oh, that's not the right link. <laughs> and chat is tearing up Patrick. How, Poor Patrick. How does a Pornhub yeah. link come up? What the heck? <laughs> I Poor got dude the missed link out for on you. his light and now he's getting yeah. torn up. Oh, I dropped the link already. <laughs> I'm just super yeah. I'm super excited for next week. <laughs> Who's using my yeah. computer, man? Yeah. This is bullshit. When Patrick finds comes yeah. to chat, says That's hello, everybody. Think I'm some sort of freak. Oh. Dude, every yeah, time I get... log in, I'm like, oh, it was my God. buddies. It wasn't my. He was here looking at shit while I was doing stuff for like half an hour. The dog. <laughs> I don't know what they call that type of thing or style. It's just it's different. <laughs> here we go. Um, yeah, yeah, I haven't been smoking, guys, either. Do you know what's crazy? If you go, like, seven days without smoking and then you smoke a joint, you just taste the flavor so much nicer. It's so much more enjoyable. I'll so, take your word for it. <laughs> I'm just going to have to try it one time. The immunity, like, I, when you lower your tolerance, you just get so much more out of it. You do, man. Hey, I'm pretty, I'm getting a lot out of it right now. So I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, I sure got a lot out of it the last couple of days, man. Like, including like a belly that's bloated. <laughs> I just <laughs> couldn't, so I can't stop myself, man. Like, I go for round two, round three, and then wake up in the middle of the so night, half asleep, should, and eat. You should have a glass of fluids and then take a drink when you think you're hungry. And you're probably not hungry. You're probably just thirsty. <laughs> Pro oh. tip. I, went, you get your water I, I think I went day. like 17 or 18 days without taking any edibles, like maybe even yeah, longer. I, I lost track of the days, but it got to the point where I was miserable, not sleep, like not sleeping. It's just so you're into self torture, is what you're saying. It basically is like not being yeah. able to sleep. It's not about this after seven days, to be quite honest, like not smoking, and that it doesn't bother me that much. Like it's it, like it well, like I said, it kind of feels good to just give your body a little break and kind of as a reset and lower your immunity. I like doing it. I do it every few months. Um, I have to, but oh, the first seven days were like coming off meth, basically. <laughs> That's why I felt like I'm assuming, like just you know, sweating and fucking withdrawing. I like I it was probably the most I ever had built up in my system. I usually only smoke. I smoke mostly in the evening. I don't smoke a lot in the morning. Usually not at all. And um, so I think I get a little daily reset, maybe. Oh, Probably. you mean so just at the evening is when you start? Yeah, usually in the evening is when I smoke the vast majority of the time. I used to, like, um, when I used to be a smoker, like a smoking cigarettes, I would, as soon as I wake up, first thing I would do would be light up a cigarette, then roll up a joint and smoke a joint, and then smoke another cigarette. <laughs> yeah, fuck that, dude. No. <laughs> no. Did that for, like, I'm sorry. And then anytime after a meal, like an instant cigarette, then a joint, and then another cigarette. Sorry. Like, and like driving, if I, if I was driving somewhere for years of my life, I would have pre-rolled joints for every single direction. And like, I would, I would literally, I was a chain smoker and it's like, it was such in this mindset of smoking, getting off tobacco was the hardest thing I ever probably had to do for an addiction thing. Like it was hard. Like even the first couple of times I tried to quit, like I was, well, like I'm telling everybody I quit. And then like, I remember it would get to where I would sneak one smoke in the morning and then like right before I'm about in the shower, like and have it all time. So I don't smell like smoke. And then it would go to one before in the morning and then one at night. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then it just came back. Then when I go to town, I just ended up starting to cheat and smoking way too much. And I tried that like a few, I tried to quit for years, multiple times, and I just couldn't do it. I'm sure people in chat can relate where it's just like, you know, I, like I said, it took edibles, being at high doses of edibles, taking them in the morning um, for a couple of weeks and then patches for like months. What to, what allowed me to be able to quit. I'll tell you the worst thing you could do is try to substitute cigarettes for a vape. I mean, you can quit Ew. smoking cigarettes that way, but I tell you what, this vape has me like a goddamn crackhead. I, I 
I will blow the house up looking for this vape that I happened to just tuck into my little roll while I was right. laying on the fucking couch and forgot about it because I got stoned and then I tried looking everywhere for the vape and I knew I didn't get up and like literally that is uh, I almost would rather smoke cigarettes than smoke this. Oh, uh, I tried the vape and took like a puff inhaled it too strong it like hurts your lungs so hard when you do it like i guess disgusted me i just couldn't vape after that happened to me a couple times like oh my god does anybody know that's tried vaping and like inhaled it like here's one thing is like when you're this might be hard to ex uh, understand if you're not a smoker when i'm smoking tobacco versus smoking weed it's not the same thing you don't take a puff and inhale it the same way like a cigarette you it's like a instant kind of flow where it's like yeah, you cigarette. If you hit yeah, a cigarette like you do weed, you would fuck. You would die. Dude, you would it die. Would be disgusting. It Your just, chest would be on fire. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't know why. I'm That's the only thing that I am a, a little bit scared. Not the only thing, but one of the things I'm scared of about going to Barcelona is I know it's popular in Europe to mix the nicotine. Oh my goodness! And the you weed. Seen... I don't really want that. <laughs> you should have seen when I did that to people because what? Or that was in Amsterdam. First of all, I had such a hard time finding anything in Amsterdam. And then when I did find anything that's half decent and I go into a cafe, I just roll up pure weed. And even by the end, I had shatter that I was smearing on rollies and then lighting up. And someone would be like, yeah, and I'd pass it to them. And they were going, oh, what the fuck? There's no tobacco in this. It's pure weed. Like they're not used to it. I remember people passing it to me. And, and this isn't just a... Uh, I'm going to say it's not just a European thing. This is a back East thing in Canada, at least maybe not anymore, but like for years back East tobacco hash, mixing it with tobacco, it was common. And I, it's a back East European thing. I don't know in Canada and it's disgusting. I could never do it. I just, ugh. I don't know. I see people do it. I think it's disgusting. You guys agree? <laughs> the only time I've had it and I enjoyed it was I had uh, one time. At a pri at a pro party, I can't talk now. At a party, we um, they rolled cannabis, straight cannabis, in a tobacco leaf that they had there, and they actually I watched them like wash it in water, so they got it like real flimsy, and then they dried it off, and then they put all the weed in it, and then they rolled it up, and that was really good. Honestly, I really enjoyed that. So like just a little tiny hint, maybe I I, I like, but. That was a, that was actually a nicotine. Uh, it was a, just a leaf. So, I I don't like it on like what is it when they spliffs or what do you call it when they take the the, the, the tobacco? Leaf? I think they call them spliffs. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Like so many of my friends, that's what they smoke. They love them, and, uh, stuff. Yeah. and I just it makes everything kind of burn look visually a little bit better. But oh, I I hate it. Like I just uh, I know that's what Loki like too. Loki grow likes rolling them in spliffs. Um, I just, yeah, not my thing, man. Not my thing either. But um, I did enjoy that one cigar thing. Someone said, being in a bar makes me want a cigarette. I think one of the stupidest visions, and I don't know why this happened for like three years, I'll be right before I'm about to quit and quitting. I just have this stupid vision of me kind of standing on some tropical kind of beach and wanting to smoke and thinking that that's like a, like i don't know why it's so stupid but it's smoke, like oh what i'm never joint. gonna be able to just be on a beach and enjoying a cigarette it's this vision that i i can't explain i laugh at it now because i don't have that urge like <laughs> I, I sometimes honestly think about a cigarette though i have to admit even though it's seven or eight years like sometimes i think about it I'm like oh well you know just one smoke but but when i'm walking in front of like when i'm downtown vancouver and i'm walking and there's someone smoking in front of me i'm like what the fuck? You know, they're blowing out the smoke and hitting the it. smell. Yeah. Well, there's certain smokes, tobacco that smells worse than others. And uh, sorry, guys, you don't, tobacco you, fucking stinks. You, you don't you don't smell smell the cigarette and crave it because I hear no, that sometimes. No, I don't either. Not, just once in a while, I kind of feel like like I don't know. Like sometimes I don't know when even things are very, going very good and I'm sitting around with someone. It's like and they're going out for a smoke and I like I, sometimes I'll be like, oh, you know, well, I just. Would maybe feel a few take a puff, but I even know as a fact that for even me to take a puff, it would probably give me an instant head rush, and it would taste gross. Oh, the yeah. thought of it is so disgusting. Ever. Yeah, yeah. So it's like it's been, it's been eight, eight oh. years or something. So that's the same way. It's like my my brother in law 
he'll like go over, he'll walk it out somewhere. So it's fucking embarrassing. He's done it a couple times. Somebody smoking a cigarette, he'll swap by. He's like, excuse me, can I have a, a little smell of that? And he fucking like he, he misses it so bad. He's like the whole ritual and experience and, and process of smoking. And he's like obsessed with it. And he does the vapes now. But that that's the way I am. It's like too, it's like if I smell it now, it's like fuck, okay, I get nauseous. I don't want anything to do with it. It does not. Do it. Well, you know, yeah, I used to be that person that was like, people would look at me while I was smoking like God. And I'd be like, get out of here if you don't like it. And now I'm just like, oh, my God, I was such a fucking rude asshole when I was a smoker. Like, this shit smells like shit. I think what happened was we started smoking inside the house, which was the worst fucking thing you could ever do. Uh, and that's when everything we were just like, fuck, it stunk. And it just it was terrible. And we quit and i swear to god i don't ever want to smell a cigarette again ever but yeah. the vape like i said i almost wish i wouldn't have thought that i could you know do the vape i'll just do the vape for a little bit like i'm glad i don't smoke cigarettes but i am uh, so much more addicted to this vape i think than i was actually the cigarettes themselves oh you, br you brought it up it's so disrespectful like to do it outside like i i was like that too i didn't give a fuck and thinking hey when i was a smoker for years that's everybody else's problem but especially if you're smoking in an area where you're not supposed to be like i was at a hotel and someone was smoking and my kids were right there and i did i guess lose my lose my temper because i was like well like i said it pissed me off like I, I even though i was always aware when i was a smoker if i ever saw kids or any way coming close to me I would always turn and try to move away from them and blow up like I, but at the same time, uh, it's, it sucked when you see people doing that. It's yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's disrespectful and you, to do it around kids. The, 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 so they have to smell it. And just also, yeah, it's do you, you know, you imagine... smoking 10 cigarettes and you walk by them and they smell like a goddamn ashtray. Yeah. <laughs> but can you imagine sitting on that plane, uh, across the ocean with just people chain smoking cigarettes inside of it, in the fucking seventies oh. ash ashtrays built in the armrests. I don't know if I could make oh, it. I don't know if I could God. make it. I yeah, could maybe yeah. make an hour, but after that, I'd be done. Oof. Couldn't breathe for like six hours. <laughs> Dude, come on, oh, oh I know. I mean, That's insane remember. to me that they would allow that in the fucking plane, even like at any time. <laughs> what? what? My friend's father would not let him roll down the window more than a little bit. And he used to just box my friend. It's kind of so <laughs> funny because I was a smoker. And so many of my friends, the parents smoked, the kids hated it and they never smoked. And yeah. he just used to, talk, he wouldn't let, he'd only, he, he wouldn't let him roll the <laughs> window down because of the air blowing. You know, if you have too much air blowing while you're smoking, it's just, it's not nice and it can fuck it up. And he, um, and my, so my, my friend's kid was like, or not my, not my friends, my, my friend's father or my friend was exposed by his father to smoking his whole life. And he just fucking hated it because he smoked in the house and in every single vehicle and every situation. He absolutely hated it. Fucking gnarly. <laughs> Someone said you can buy it. Yeah. Pack of smokes for 25 cents. Used to buy a pack. Wow. The Fino. How old are you? The cheapest I ever remember was like 450 Canadian. Now they're like 20 something dollars in Cuba. You could buy them for a dollar a pack. Um, okay. Well guys, I think we've ranted on about smoking. Does anybody else want to come up and ask a question or else we're going to have to kill it here. Drop the link one last time in zoom. Smoking in hospitals. Fuck. My favorite was the smoking in, in the restaurants where they had a smoking section that was divided by just a, like a little fucking <laughs> divider that, that you could totally air above, yeah. around. That's what I that's said. I was like, oh, not even a week ago. I was like, don't, I do remember though. Remember back in the day when you used to just be able to go in the restaurant, sit down, eat, smoke a cigarette. Denny's, man. You can go in Denny's. Denny's. Go yeah, to I casino. do. Yeah, I do remember that. That was. Okay, uh... hey, Des. Oh, what, what the heck? No. I'm just trying to find. Sorry, um, Des has asked for a quick nutrient breakdown. Shit. Um, one last time, I'll show it here at the end of the show. Um, like recommended PPM. I'm not going to get into that, but I'll just quickly show you. This is the lineup: the base, the bloom, the grow, week two to four boost, week five to six boost. The main thing that we're really paying attention to is in flower, how we have control of the nitrogen, where you'll notice that. 
you know, especially for like from week four on, you're only going to be using boot or sorry, from week five, six, you're going to be using just this boost with these two and you can totally control the base how you want. Um, and like, uh, you know, it's going to be, oh, try and drink them. It's okay. We got our bro from the UK quickly coming up. Um, it's going to be like basically how, what I've always kind of said, it, it, it's going to be, you know, for PPM levels and that type of recommendation, I'm not a heavy feeder, but if you want to go crazy, you can, I just like this crop alone. I, I, one thing that I'm also kind of doing is I'm trying to see if less is more. So I've kept the food way down and I'm trying to even keep the light way down and just try to see how the death bubba responds to it. Cause I know, I know it can take a lot of light, but just curious to see as a test. I've, um, destiny no it's definitely not like uh every but like here's the thing is like a lot of people are using it right now and the only thing difference is the bloom had a seven in front of it and people are having great results and um so the only thing is it's just really giving control of nitrogen Trying trichomes. How's it going, sir? Yeah, fine, GML. Good to see you, man. How is the United Kingdom treating you? Oh, it's fine, mate. Nice and cold here. Mind you, not as cold as where you are. <laughs> it's not bad. It's cold here, I'll tell you. I'm cold. Yes. Speaking of that, I have a huge problem with my grow right now. So I have to get these motorized dampers put in on my ducting. The air is coming through those filters. My ducting is full of water, the insulation where it's dripping. Like I, I've just been too busy to deal with it. I have to cut all the installation out. I have to get motorized dampers that are hooked onto a cruise temp. So it stops the air at the building. You have to have it because it's straight up. The, the ducting is filling up with water from condensation from cold air coming through the mushroom cap filter that's even though it's a it's down to like a hepa filter size but like it's down to a hepa filter size but doesn't restrict air from flowing when a fan is on so air is freely still moving through it and it's attracted because it's cold getting into warm as soon as it gets in the building and as it gets closer the warm air from and i even have dampers but they're not airtight. And so without it, there's no, you've had the hardest time finding dampers. Yeah. That actually That's... are airtight. See, so it's con. Yes. State it's condensating. Okay. Let's shut down YouTube and we can take it to zoom for five minutes here. I don't have much left in me guys. All right, cool. Everybody have a good night. Hey, oh, yo, sorry. Well, we're going to have a shout out. Sorry. Oh, we're doing shout outs? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I'm, um, Heston, you go first. Sorry. <laughs> Our edibles are kicking in pretty heavy right now. <laughs> yeah, hey, shout out chat was just uh, out of control tonight. Everybody's uh, been so, like I said, the outpouring of support for Grandmaster the last couple of weeks has been awesome. Uh, shout out to uh, Grassroots Fabric Bags. Just got my 45-gallon bag filled up. Always fun to get one of those massive bags full of, full of soil. And, uh, yeah, I think that's uh, about all I got tonight. It's fun to water those things, too, for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Like the, the uh, bottomless cup. Yeah. <laughs> E-trap ventilation. Um, okay, Spartan, next to you. And thank you, Heston. I just want to shout out all the support we've been getting. To uh, I think, man, it's just, I don't know. I feel like I'm riding a wave kind of a thing. We're getting so much support so fast. And I uh, just appreciate all of it. So shout out to everyone who's watching, who's been a part of that. And uh, just stay tuned because we got more to come. Early. Shout out chat everybody tonight, of course. Um, both chats tonight were pretty good. Uh shout out Patrick for leaving. Let yeah. somebody else win. Everybody's waiting for you next week, Patrick. So you better come with your thick skin on. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna shout out anything grows. I don't think she's on tonight, but love you, Emily. And <laughs> Mama Kush, Mama Q and uh mr organics on there tonight shouting you guys out um and yeah shouting out the panelists for being here with us and all the love that everybody gives us thanks
Thank you, Charlene. And yeah, I just first shout out has to go to chat and all the support. Like I'm overwhelmed. Like I'm, you guys are giving me ready the energy to just do anything and I, I can't turn it off. Like when I'm done an 18 hour day and get to lie, start to lie down, doesn't mean I'm going to bed. Like I'm just starting to try to chill on the TV and then answer some more messages on Instagram. And what's going through my head is how can I make things better? How can I improve these lights? How can I take an edge on my competitors? And um, I, I can't turn it off. And now we have the power to innovate anything. <laughs> and like in well, we're in this uh we're gonna be in about seven days, we're gonna be done the Mercules glasses. Well, like all the final design work, and we're good. We're actually making two sets of really nice glasses, and we're gonna be putting in the molds. By the way, who is it that followed me again? What was his name? Uh, like I can't even Method think of it. Method Man Method Man followed me on Instagram, and then when I posted I posted a video with me and Mercury saying a collaboration. He unfollowed me and removed me as a follower on him. Oh. And I didn't know that there was a beef. Um, so with oh. that, oh, I know. Can you guys what fucking play? Method Man fucking followed me and then unfollowed me and removed me as a follower the following day. And I, I asked Mercules about it. He kind of laughed. Um, so yeah, it was... I'm like, I was, I was shocked. I, I was, I, I sent the message. I felt it made my fucking day. Method man followed me. Like he was following like 170 something people or something or 180 people. Like how the fuck did that happen? Um, it was so sick. And then to. <laughs> and that's that, almost, that's almost even more badass than getting followed is like immediately fucking unfollowed and removed as a follower. That's like, well, you know who else took the time to wild? fucking personally. Who is, who is Kim Kardashian's following. dad's name again? He followed me and uh, for um, a few days uh, and Caitlin. me. <laughs> what? Caitlyn Jenner. Caitlyn Jenner followed me. I got. I have the pictures, man. He followed <laughs> me. He liked. I remember. I guess that. they saw that post when that incident happened with the deer. I don't know if you guys remember where like that deer got trapped in the yard and I had my dogs. It was actually one of me. <laughs> I was the person in the wild video, and he saw that and liked that and then followed me. And followed me for a few days. And then uh, I guess some of my posting was pretty wild. And at that point, I was <laughs> posting some crazy shit. You know, Exotic Joe follows us or follows me. Um, we had some pretty crazy people follow. But yeah, it was wild, that shit with Method Man. Anyways, back to my shout out and to the people and the support. It's been, I don't know what happened. I've been beating the same drum for the last two years. I don't know. And then all of a sudden, it just happened. And it's like people realize. And I understand, I guess, our first year in business it might be hard to trust us or see it. People are afraid of going with a new company, but then like when the results are in and it's like, we just, our manufacturing is the best in the world. We don't have, we literally don't have failures. Like at this point, there's less than two dozen diode issues out of all the lights that have gone out. I think it's even more like probably less than 18. And I'm not saying that we're not going to have them, but if we have them, we're going to take care of it that day, the second we know. You know, if there's an emergency, if there's something, we're going to be there for you on a Sunday on my daughter's birthday, if I have to be. And I know that sounds crazy, but I'm not joking. Um, I love all the support and I'm here for the people. And we're, you know, I don't care. If I see bullshit, I will call it out. I do not care if it's not professional. We've made it. I don't have to answer to some big investor. It's like a good brother of mine who's the reason that also like, you know, I didn't do this alone. We also have a team and someone that believed in me who invested money into us at the beginning. And it's like, um, it's awesome. Like we, there's nothing that I feel like that can stop us now. And um, I'm going to go harder and harder and harder each day, each day that we do better. It's more motivating for me to work harder. I know it's crazy, but it's the truth. And I love what we do. And I love my life and I love my friends, my family, and all of you guys that are supporting us. And you love the thrips in your flower room. <laughs> Yeah, just everything. Like what is happening is it's it's changed our life. Like I just think about where we were from like, and this just goes to show, and I've said this so many times, don't ever underestimate somebody. Look, a lot can happen in a year. And, you know, to be quite honest, I thought that I could get here faster than we did, to be quite honest with what I was doing, but it was a hell of a lot harder than I thought because we really have worked hard and we beat the drum every single day. And if you go back two years, I didn't take a day off, even if we were sick, like we still 
beat the drum every single day and we're putting the word out and building, doing quality business and putting out quality lights. And we've been there for people and people know that we're not ever going to let you down. We're not ever going to sell you out. And, you know, if I make a fuck up, I have no problem admitting it and putting it out there and letting people know that I did something wrong or I was wrong and I had the wrong opinion. And here's the thing is how we've seen things evolve with the spectrum tuning. It's so clear to me that it's the future and what everybody wants. And now we've got the three best spectrum tuning lights with the most affordable, in my opinion, you know, with the biggest spectrum range. And we've also changed our pricing to be to just change everything. And I think it's going to reshape the LED industry this year. So again, I want to thank everybody for all the support for coming in hot. Thank you for the love and we'll see you next week. And let's drop the zoom link. Drop the link and then I'll end it. Um, did, all right, wait. guys. Thank you. Yeah, I don't know, like, what could have, what changed in the last two months? Was it just because of the Voyager and the Borg evolution? And I don't know what happened, guys. <laughs>